They get set to kick off. Reach hammers it over the left, and this one is going to go out of bounds. The Bengals loaded up on their left side. Breach kicked it that way, but he kicked it over too far. The ball went out of bounds. And now they'll come back, and he'll have to kick it from the 30-yard line. Not an auspicious start at all. A tremendous number of flash bulbs popping on that opening kickoff, Phil. They were firing from all over the place, and uh, a lot of amateur photogs here trying to take home a, a memory of the Super Bowl. They certainly will tell them very, very shortly if they continue during action that flash cameras are not allowed. I would not think that they would allow them to go on while the game is going on. Plenty were flashing when Diana Ross was singing the national anthem. But they should not be allowed while the game is actually in play. The Ben Gals received a big cheer from the audience when they came in to participate with the University of Michigan band. Before the game, the Ben Gals down in the corner to our right, also down in the corner to our left. So Breach tees it up now at the 30-yard line, and this time he will boot it high down the middle. Coming up to take it is Lawrence at the 10. Up to the 15, to the 20, gets to the 25, 27, loses the ball, and the Bengals have it at the 25-yard line. It is John Simmons, I believe, the rookie up out of SMU. I think John Simmons got on top of it. Guy Fraser was there, too, but an excellent hit around the 27, and Ring popped up the football. Now a turnover by the 49ers, who led the league in turnovers, plus 23 for the year, and the ball was either stripped out by Fraser or somebody else, and the Bengals are right in business at the 49er 26-yard line, and the Bengals' offensive unit out on the field much more quickly than they thought they would be. Rookie Guy Fraser out of Wyoming made the hit, and another rookie, John Simmons, picked up the football. Collinsworth goes left. Curtis comes to the right. Alexander and Johnson in the backfield. Now Alexander goes wide left. We'll set the rest of the offense and the 49er defense for you. Back to throw is Anderson. Fires out. It's caught by Curtis. That's the 20. Hits from behind and drops at the 18-yard line. Eric Bright hits Collinsworth from behind. A real cheap blow as the ball was caught by Curtis. Jack Reynolds back there to make the stop of the ball is uh, just inside the 19-yard line. So the Bengals go right to the air, and they get a second down and three. Across the front, Munoz and Mike Wilson are the tackle. Dave Lapham is the left guard, Max Montoya the right guard. Blair Bush is the center, and they have a four-man defensive line in there. Fred Dean over playing the right end spot. Second and two, a handoff into the line is Pete Johnson. Pete fights his way to maybe the 16-yard line. Money is pushed back by three or four tacklers, led by one of the inside linebackers, Craig Pookie. Bengals came up with a big special team play early in the San Diego game as Rick Rosano forced the fumble and Don Bass recovered deep in, uh, San, Fran or in San Diego territory and the Bengals converted that into an early touchdown and now on the first play of the game the Bengals special teams again forced the fumble with the guy Fraser on the hit and the recovery made by defensive back John Simmons. The Bengals have a first down just by the nose of the football just inside the San Francisco 17-yard line. On defense is Wayne Board and Jim Stuckey now with Archie Reese, the middle guard, up front. Dina Turner and Woody Harper are the outside linebackers. Jack Reynolds and Craig Pookie on the inside. Ronnie Lott and Eric Wright are the cornerbacks. Carlton Williamson, the strong safety. Dwight Hicks is the free safety. M.L. Harris has checked in to give the Bengals two tight ends now. Charlie Alexander has come out. Collinsworth goes left. Eric Wright backs off. Ronnie Lott now backs off Curtis on the right side. The 49ers shift up front, and Anderson will go back to throw. Looking now, forced out of the pocket. Up front is caught at the 10-yard line by Ross. He's down the sidelines for the five and shoves out of bounds right there. Jack Reynolds got over to knock Dan Ross out of bounds at about the five-yard line. It was a little dink over the line after Anderson held the ball a long time, and Ross finally cut into the clear at about the 12-yard line. Took the ball, went around one man, and was bumped out at the five at his first and goal. Anderson did a good job of avoiding a rush from his right. The Blair Bush came across to pick up the right end, and on the delay, it was dumped off to Ross, and he's inside the 10-yard line at the five, first and goal for Cincinnati. Now Collinsworth comes out of the ball game, and the Bengals will go back to the two tight ends. Emil Harris on the left, Dan Ross on the right, and Alexander and Pete Johnson in the backfield. Alexander is the deep man in the eye. The Bengals are at the five with the first and goal. First are in motion. A handoff, Alexander, left side. He gets about a yard, and that is all. And then he is really shoved back by a first charge. Willie Harper, the linebacker on that side, got him. Then Dwight Hicks, the safety, came up to help out along with Ronnie Lott. 
We'll see the penetration. There was not much of a gain on the play. In fact, the ball is still at the five-yard line. It will be second down and goal. 49ers played the rush very tough this year. They gave up only 10 rushing touchdowns all season long. And they gave up an average of only three and a half yards every time a team tried to rush against them. Defense really has been the strong point of this club. Collinsworth is to the left now. Curtis split out wide to the right. The only running back is Pete Johnson. Second down and goal at the five. The blitz is on. Anderson back to throw, and he is nailed by Jim Stuckey. Back at about the 12-yard line. Stuckey got around Mike Wilson and blew in and nailed Anderson back in a bunch at about the 12-yard line. So good coverage in the secondary. And Anderson had to eat the ball. Now the 49ers bring in about five substitutes, including Fred Dean, as they will go to the four-man line. Steve Kreider checks in for the Bengals, and they also go to their nickel. Jim Stuckey is the guy who recovered that late fumble and preserved the NFC Championship game victory over the Dallas Cowboys. The Bengals don't want to come out of this with anything less than a touchdown. Curtis and Collins were his flank to the left, and now Kreider goes that way also. Four-man rushes. Anderson is back to throw. Intercepted at the five-yard line. Out to the 10. Down to the 20, the 25, and pushed out of bounds at about the 30-yard line. White Hicks stepped in front of that pass. Down at about the five-yard line, and that has to be a big, big boost for the San Francisco 49ers. As after turning the ball over, they come up with a big interception. There's time out on the field with a score of the Bengals nothing and the 49ers nothing. Bengals had third and goal at the San Francisco five. They sent triple wide receivers left. Isaac Curtis cut over the middle. He was the, the man the pass was intended for, but for some reason, Isaac pulled up in his pattern, got around the goal line, and Dwight Hicks was right there to pick it off. So that is how the first Bengal series in the first game ended, with a quick interception. Up front, Wilson Whitley, the nose guard, Ross Browner, Eddie Edwards, the end. Harris, Cameron, LeClaire, Williams will set the rest in a moment. They have Clark and Solomon on opposite sides. Montana is back to throw. It's a three man rest. Sets up the screen. It's the Ricky Patton up at the 35, and he'll be pulled down at about the 39 yard line. A little screen left to Ricky Patton, the former teammate of Reggie Williams up at Flint Southwest High School. And it goes for about six or seven yards, just depending on where they spot the ball. Eddie Edwards coming over to make the stop. They'll put it right at the 38. So give him six, and it will be second down and four. Louis Breeden and Kenny Riley are the corners. Bobby Kemp is the strong safety. Ryan Hicks, the free safety. They have Dwight Clark and Solomon as the wide receivers. Charlie Young is the tight end. Earl Cooper and Ricky Patton are the running back. Joe Montana is the quarterback. Now they send Charlie Young, the tight end, in motion to the right. Montana is back to throw. Fires it upfield. Is caught out at the 44-yard line. Dropped immediately right at the 45, Dwight Clark. He generally is the guy who will work underneath the linebackers, and he did that time, and the gain is good for a first down up to the 44. Let's pause 15 seconds for station identification. This is the Cincinnati Bengals Football Network. Gary Burbank morning. Debbie Connor midday. Jim LaBarbera afternoon. Bob Trumpy sports talk. Lynn Riley evenings and talk net. The new number one lineup in 82 from WLW, Cincinnati. It's a pitch back. It's Cooper on the left side. He's forced back, and he'll just get back to the line of scrimmage. Reggie Williams blew through, rerouted him, and he got back to the 38 or 9-yard line, and Ross Brown at the right end, and Jim LeClaire were over there to put him down. Reggie Williams' quick thrust and penetration really messed up that play. Good cutback by Cooper to avoid a loss as uh, that uh, slow-developing sweep was really sniffed out well by Reggie Williams and the rest of the Bengals. They had plenty of pursuit to their right, to the left side of the San Francisco formation. They send Freddie Solomon out to the right. To the left side comes Dwight Clark. He'll get double coverage over there. Riley and Reggie Williams. Amos Lawrence in the backfield. Back to throw is Montana. Fires upfield. It's good down to the Bengals 46-yard line. And immediately swarm down down there is Freddie Solomon, the tight end. Bobby Kemp got over there. LeClaire, Louis Breeden. But the bullet by Montana was right into the arms and is good to the Bengals' 46-yard line. And that is very close to where they have to go for a first down. In fact, uh, Pat Agard, no, it is going to be, as we can see from here, maybe a foot short. It will be third down and just about that foot to go. So Freddie Solomon has started despite uh, the questionable knee, and uh, he was the receiver on that pattern. 
Montana hands off around the outside. A handoff now back to Montana. Look forward downfield. But the clock down at the 32-yard line. A great catch down there by Charlie Young, who went high in the air, was cut from underneath. That ball went off to two men before it wound up back in the hands of Joe Montana. And he threw down to the Bengals' 33-yard line, where it was caught by Charlie Young. And the 49ers have another first down. Third and short yardage, and they went for the pass. They faked the sweep left. They gave it on the end around to Solomon, who runs that play quite frequently. And you have to be aware of Freddie Solomon as a runner, but they pitched back to Montana and completed the pass to the tight end. Easton Ramson now goes in to replace Young. The 49ers at the Bengals, 33. They send Ramson in motion over the right. Montana's back to throw. Reggie Williams is coming. Throws it upfield. A dive, and it was not intercepted. It was dropped down at the 18-yard line by Lou Breeden, who had a great chance to intercept it as Ramson was overthrown out in the right flat. But Breeden could not hold on to the ball, so it'll come back to the 33-yard line. It will be second down and 10 for the 49ers. That was San Francisco quarterback Joe Montana's first incompletion. He was 4 for 4, now make him 4 for 5, 35 yards. Montana has had time. The Bengals have not had a great deal of pressure on them. They have not blitzed. The Bengals don't consider it a blitz unless more than four men come. Now the Bengals put seven men right up on the line of scrimmage. They'll drop a couple off. Montana has one running back in a slot left. The handoff is Cooper to the left side. He's at the 30 to the 25 and all the way down to the 22-yard line. He ran to his right. Big blocking from Randy Cross and Keith Bonhorst and Bobby Kemp and Reggie Williams finally had to pull him down. But it was the first down, a gain of 11 yards through that right side. The 49ers have not been an efficient running crew this year, but they were in the first game against the Bengals, and that one was good for 11 and a quick first down. Earl Cooper had good success with that play in the first game between these same two teams. 62 yards, a 5.2 average, and one of the theories as to why he did so well is because Eddie Edwards was injured in that game, but Eddie has helped healthy today. Bill Ring and Johnny Davis are now the running backs as Bill Walsh puts in a couple of new ones. Montana hands it off to Ring. He rips into the right side. He's all the way to the 15-yard line before Louis Breeden can corral him. Brian Hicks coming over from the safety spot to help out. They ran to their right that time, and they whipped between Eddie Edwards and Wilson Whitley in the middle. Bo Harris was taken out of the play, and it's a good, quick seven-yarder. And the 49ers are just outside the Bengal 15-yard line with a second down and three. The 49ers fumbled the opening kickoff, and the Bengals recovered it, got it down to the five-yard line, and back from the 11, Anderson was intercepted, and that threat ended. The 49ers took the ball after the run back to the 32, and they have it down at the Bengals' 15, where it is second down and about three to go. And off a pitch to the left side, running wide is Cooper. He's going to be shoved out of bounds at about the 15-yard line. He didn't gain much on the play. Reggie Williams, along with Brian Hicks, Kenny Riley, were all over there to make sure that he got out of bounds, and he did at the 15, so there is no gain on the play. Now it'll become third down and about three. 49ers have had the football for 10 plays and over five minutes in this drive. They started at the Bengals 32, at their own 32, after the interception by Dwight Hicks. 6.41 is the playing time left in this first quarter. There is no score, but the 49ers are down knocking at the goal just as the Bengals were. The game that time was about two lengths of the football. Now they'll send Solomon and Young out to the right, Dwight Clark to the left. In motion, Solomon, Montana is back to throw. Fires out of the flat, all alone at the five-yard line. Knocked out of bounds at the one is Freddie Solomon. Right down to the one-yard line before Lou Breeden could knock Solomon out of the ball game. And Solomon, who injured that knee on Wednesday, is slow getting up on the far sideline. He was in on that side, and he just drifted out in the right flat, and there was nobody there at all as he really came out clean. The ball is one yard away from the Bengals' goal line. The Bengals go to the goal line defense, and the 49ers will have a first and goal, fitting to score the first time they get their hands on the ball. The Bengals make defensive changes. The 49ers with some offensive changes. Davis, a short man, and a plunge into the line, and a touchdown. Joe Montana kept that ball and scored, as he did in the first game, and the 49ers are on the board. It is a 6 to nothing football game, and they made it look rather easily as they went 68 yards to score. One big run by Earl Cooper. The rest of them on passes, and Montana sneaked it over. And with 5.52 left here in the first quarter, 
It is six to nothing, San Francisco. Now Montana will hold. Ray Worsing will attempt the extra point. The lines are down. The snap is put down. Worsing's kick is up, and it is good. So there's time out on the field with a score the 49ers seven and the Bengals nothing. 49ers saw first blood in Super Bowl 16, a 68 yard drive, 11 plays. They held the football for 5 minutes 58 seconds. Quarterback Joe Montana on a one yard sneak for the touchdown. Montana passed brilliantly, got great protection, threw the ball well, 5 out of 6 for 49 yards in that drive. Ray Wershing set to kick off. Both Wershing and Breach went to the University of California. There's Wershing kick. He lines it down. It bounces at the 15. David Verster picks it up at the 5. Up to the 10. Comes to the 15. Spun around. Will be dropped at about the 18-yard line. Good tackle downfield by Rick Jervis. And there were a couple of others down there. Bobby Leopold along with Milt McCall. And the Bengals only get it back to the 19. It was a squib kick on purpose by Wershing. And they got pretty good coverage by the time Verser picked the ball up on the bounce at the five-yard line, a 14-yard return. And the Bengals trailing 7-0 start out at their own 19. They go with the five defensive backs, four defensive linemen, including Fred Dean. So they've got that 4-2-5 in there. Willie Harper and Jack Reynolds are the linebackers. Collinsworth left. Alexander comes outside of Curtis on the right side. Anderson is back to throw. Sets up a screen to Pete on the left side. Pete comes out to the 20. He gets to the 22-yard line. He'll be knocked down there. A good tackle by Bobby Leopold. But it looks as though Johnson might have a little running room. They let the right side of the San Francisco line, including in Fred Dean, come in. And Anderson lobbed the ball over to Pete Johnson. But Leopold, with a good tackle, cut the gain off at three. It will be second down and seven, and the 49ers make a lot of defensive substitutions. San Francisco really putting the pressure on Ken Anderson. He's been sacked once and pressured just about every other time he's tried to throw the football. He hasn't been able to fire down the field effectively yet. Collinsworth left. Curtis to the right. Two running backs in. Now they take a split behind Anderson. It is second and seven. Kenny back to throw under that four-man rush. Looks out in the flat. It's caught at the 15-yard line by Pete. 20, 25, 27-yard line. Before he can be hauled down by Archie Reese, the middle guard who got out there, along with Ronnie Lott, the cornerback on that side. Again, out to maybe the 27. Let's see where Pat Haggerty puts it down. Right at the 27-yard line. It is a gain of five. And the Bengals now will be looking at a third and two as we have about four and a half minutes left to play in this first quarter. 49ers lead it 7 to nothing. They bring three new men in now, including Fred Dean, figuring it as a passing situation, third and two. The Bengals have two tight ends in as Collinsworth comes out. The 49ers put five men up tight on that line of scrimmage, two other linebackers right up close. Anderson fakes, rolls out to the right. At the 25, is up to the 30 and will go out of bounds and has the first down. Ronnie Lott was the guy that got over there and chased him out of bounds. There's that fake and that naked bootleg out to the right. And Anderson knew right where he had to go. He picked up the first down with a yard to spare at the 30-yard line. He needed two, he got three. Anderson was the Bengals' second leading rusher this year behind Pete Johnson with an even 300 yards, and that's far more than any other quarterback in the National Football League this year. Bill Walsh talked a lot this week about his fear of Ken Anderson's running ability, and he made some inferences that the San Francisco 49ers might try to hit him low. I don't know who he was trying to intimidate. Curtis Wright, Collinsworth left. Lott comes back off the line of scrimmage. Hand off into the line. Pete Johnson burrows his way into the left side. Finds the going right side. Finds the going tough. Makes maybe three up to about the 33 before Pookie and Stucker and Archie Reese, the middle guard, can pile it up. So Pete Johnson, who averaged almost eight yards a carry in the first ball game against the 49ers, gets a short three at the 33. It will be second down and seven. Now Fred Dean is the fourth defensive lineman. They'll continue showing his different faces on defense because they'll bring new men in on just about every play. Now we have a slot left with Curtis and Collinsworth over that way. Alexander and Pete Johnson are in the backfield. Now Alexander comes in motion out to the right. And Anderson will go back to play against that four-man rush. Now he rolls off to his left at the 35-yard line. Slides down at about the 39. Just about where he had to go for the first down. Over there was Eric Wright, who made sure that he was down right there. 
Munoz pushed Fred Dean to the outside, and Anderson ran to the inside of him to his left and got over there close enough that they... Well, they're not going to bring in the chains. It's going to be about two feet short of a first down, maybe a yard at the 39. 49ers are doing a physical job on Isaac Curtis at the moment, bumping him at the line of scrimmage, and Isaac is having trouble getting into his patterns at this point. So it is third down, short yardage, about a yard to go at the Bengals' 39. The 49ers jam up tightly, so do the Bengals. They bring Verser in motion, handoff into the line of feet, and he has the first down as he gets over the 40 to maybe the 41-yard line. Stopped by lot middle guard Archie Reed. How well you control the middle guard is a big factor in how your running game will go. And Blair Bush, with help from either one of the guards, is the guy who is responsible for taking care of that middle man. Now John Hardy comes in as a defensive lineman as the 49ers just continue to change him. The Bengals have a first down at their own 41. The 49ers lead it 7-0, and we have 2 minutes and 5 seconds left here in the first quarter. Cottonsworth left, Curtis will be to the right. Cornerbacks go back about 10 yards this time. Anderson goes back to throw. Look going long down the field and send it for Collinsworth. He can't get it, a good defensive play. Eric Wright knocked it down, way down at about the 12-yard line. Wright, right with Collinsworth, got a hand up in the air, deflected the ball. And the first long bomb of the afternoon goes awry. Anderson went on the straight fly pattern to Collinsworth, who had single coverage from the rookie Eric Wright out of Missouri. The ball was there, maybe hung a little bit, and Wright, with a diving tip, knocked it away from the Bengal rookie out of Florida. Great play by Eric Wright. He was actually beaten by a step on that play. So Jim Stuckey comes in now. Dwayne Board goes out. Alexander has come out. The Bengals go over the two tight ends, Ross and M.L. Harris, one running back. And Curtis and Collinsworth. Again, the cornerbacks about 10 yards deep as they bury that defensive front. Anderson is back to throw. The blitz is on. Fires over the sidelines. Collinsworth catches it, but he did not have both feet in bounds at the 46-yard line on that rather deep out. Collinsworth caught it in front of the 49ers bench, but could not get both feet in. Now the Bengals stalled out at their own 41-yard line have a third down and 10. It stops the clock with a minute and 46 seconds left in this first quarter. Difficult down and distance situation for Ken Anderson against the defense that the rushes the quarterback and covers the receivers so well, as the 49ers do. A third and 10 is a nightmare play-calling situation, and Lindy Infante up in the press box is uh, scratching his head, no doubt, making this call. Well, they put Fred Dean right behind the center. Now they move him over toward the left side as he continues to move around not wanting to show where he is going to come from. A quick blitz is on. Anderson back to throw. Has time. Now he's going to be hit and drop back at his 36. No one open. Well covered downfield. All the way down the middle, Isaac Curtis was covered, and he was nailed back there by linebacker Keena Turner as the Bengals had the blitz going against them from San Francisco. Anderson sacked for the second time back at the 37. He loses four, and for the first time this afternoon, Pat McAnally will have to go into punt. Actually, Cincinnati picked up the blitz pretty well, and Ken had quite a bit of time to throw the football, but his receivers were covered and probably made the right move in holding on to the football and taking the sack. Three were downfield, and they were well covered. Solomon back, along with Dwight Hicks. The line of scrimmage, the 37. A snap back to McAnally. Pat wobbles one off the side of his foot. It will bounce at about the 30-yard line. Goes down to the 25 to the 20. A great bounce down inside the 10. And it'll be down right about at the 10-yard line. So there's one of those lucky McAnally punts that he just hacked off the right side of his foot, got a great bounce of about another 20 yards. The 49ers will be starting out at their own 10. There's time out on the field with the score. The 49ers 7, the Bengals nothing. 49ers 7, Bengals nothing with a minute one remaining in the first quarter of Super Bowl 16 from the Pontiac Silverdome. The Bengals held the football filled for just under five minutes, but really couldn't get anything going, although they had a great chance to score on that deep one to Chris Collinsworth. Only the 49ers' second possession at their own 10-yard line. They have the two wide receivers left and right. Now they go in an eye with Patton behind Cooper, and Joe Montana will go back to throw. Fires out in the flat. It's knocked down by Ken Riley in front of Dwight Clark, and Riley almost got an interception. I think they anticipated the Bengals might blitz, and they did. At least Reggie Williams came in from the right side. Montana really got rid of the ball in a hurry. Clark only had time to make a shallow cut, 
And Kenny Rowdy dove right in front of him to knock the ball down. Veteran Ken Riley did a great job on single coverage against the NFL's leading receiver, Dwight Clark. Reggie Williams came from his right outside linebacking spot and knocked Joe Montana to the deck just as he released the football. They'll go with two tight ends now. Easton Ramson is the second. Second and ten, the 49ers at their own ten. Patton and handoff is Ricky Patton. Wider on the right side. He's dragged back at the three-yard line by Ralph Browner. Browner really got away from Dan Audick. And on that sweep to the left, Browner burst through and nailed Ricky Patton all the way back at about the three- or four-yard line. They will put it down at the three, a seven-yard loss. You know, I can always remember, Andy, old high school coach of mine used to say the most dangerous run in football is an end sweep. And especially when you're backed up against your own goal line. And now the 49ers will have a third and 17. The Bengals will go to the nickel. And uh, Tom Dinkle goes in as one of the other linebackers. They have Ray Griffin in there. Hicks. On the inside, Montana hands off at the five-yard line. Cooper gets up to the 10, the 12-yard line, a flag down on the play, and he will be dropped right there. So he gained about nine in the play. Louis Breeden and Bobby Kemp up in the secondary hauled him down. A Bengal player is down on the ground injured. It is one of the linebackers. All we can see is the number five from here. Bengals had too many men on the field. They're going to be penalized for having 12 men on the football field. We do have a Bengal linebacker down. There is time out on the field with the score, the 49ers seven and the Bengals nothing. They did a lot of shifting and they had too many men in there. The 49ers accepted the penalty, which moves the ball out to the eight yard line. Now it will be third down and 12. But Tom Dinkle now, who was on his stomach, has rolled over on his back. The Bengal doctors are out there taking a look at him and we have a delay in play. Just five seconds left to play here in this first quarter, the 49ers lead at 7 to nothing. The Bengals continue to make substitutions. Ross Browner came off the field. Now he is going back. Mike St. Clair is in there. Eddie Edwards is in there. Burley is in there. Browner is in there. But Tom Dinkle is still down on the ground at the 8-yard line. And we can't see what they might be looking at. Dinkle now getting up to a sitting position. And it's possible that he just really had his bell rung. Oh, he bent his neck as he ran into the tackler from the side. Well, there are a lot of Super Bowl parties going on back in Cincinnati, and uh, there's one I've gone to down through the years, and I'll say hello to Bill Fitzgerald and his crew over there watching the ball game today. Dinkle is up on his feet now, standing out on the field, uh, coming off under his own power, although Wally Temperman is holding one arm, and Dinkle obviously is a little shaky as he comes off the field. Bill, they're going to be listening to our broadcast of Super Bowl 16 over in the Solomon Islands. Bob King is in the Peace Corps there. He's from Cincinnati. And his brother Peter writes for the Cincinnati Inquirer. And Pete is taping the game. He's going to send it over to his brother Bob, who's in the Peace Corps in the Solomon Islands of the Pacific. Well, that's great. As many people as can hear the ball game around the world, the better. It'll be third down and 12 for the 49ers, now at their own eight. Buddy Solomon goes out to the right. Bengals have just four defensive backs in the ball game, four linemen. A handoff, Ricky Patton around the outside will get up to the 10 to the 12-yard line, and he'll be pulled down there, and this time they will have to punt. So he gains about four on that sweep off to the right. Mike St. Clair, one of those over to get him. And a couple of others to help out, including Ray Griffin, as the first quarter comes to an end. That is the end of the first quarter. With the score, the 49ers 7 and the Bengals nothing. After 15 minutes of football in Super Bowl 16, the 49ers lead the Bengals 7-0. The 49er touchdown, a one-yard Joe Montana run, capping off the 68-yard 11 play, 5 minute and 58 second drive. First quarter statistics, uh, the 49ers 65-yard total offense, 49 pass, 16 run. The Bengals only 33 yards in total offense, 16 rushing and 27 passing. Ken Anderson, four out of seven. That one big interception to pick off by Dwight Hicks, which uh, started them off on their touchdown drive. The ball is at the 12-yard line, and Jim Miller, the barefooted second-year man from Mississippi, will be in the boot when we get things going. And that interception after the Bengals had recovered a fumble on the opening kickoff and had taken down to the five, were pushed back to the 11. And then that interception really had to hype up the 49ers. They took the ball, moved it right down the field. 
And Miller standing now about three or four yards deep in the end zone. Mike Fuller is the sole safety for the Bengals standing back near midfield. Miller averaged about 41 and a half yards a punt this year. Randy Cross is the deep snapper. Gets the ball in. It is almost blocked, but he gets a good high kick away, and Mike Fuller will take it back at the 45. Fuller comes up to midfield. We'll get right there, and that is all. So the Bengals have good field position as Miller hung up a high punt. Down under the cover, first man down, Amos Lawrence. And the Bengals will take over just shy of the 50-yard line in their own territory. Steve Kreider, the wide man on the right, came in and just failed to block that punt by Miller. Miller juggled a low snap and barely got the kick away as Kreider came across and just barely missed getting a piece of the football. We've seen a lot of different 49er fronts here in this first quarter as they continue to shake things up, try to confuse that Bengals offense. Curtis goes to the right. Collinsworth to the left. Both of them are a yard back. Now Collinsworth goes in motion to the right side, and the 49ers don't shift. It's Pete Johnson on a cutback. Pete pulls his way about five yards in through that right side down to the 49ers' 46-yard line. Dwight Hicks along with Archie Reese were the two men who made the tackle on Pete. The flow went to the right and on the cutback. Pete Johnson cut in behind him, got the ball down to the 46, give him five. The Japanese radio broadcasters are next door to us, Andy, and they had their, all their information up on the wall as to the times before the game. And down to 4.15, it said kickoff. There must not be any Japanese word for kickoff. <laughs> Sayonara. Slot formation to the left. The Bengals with a second and five, and a whistle blows as the Bengals, I believe, want to call a timeout. One of the two teams has called one here. Timeout. Cincinnati. It is the Bengals calling a timeout, and there's timeout on the field with the score. The 49ers, seven. The Bengals, nothing. The Bengals a bit shaky, maybe a bit tentative here at the start of Super Bowl 16. They had 12 men on the field in that last San Francisco drive and gave the 49ers an extra down after the penalty. And then Chris Collinsworth had just wasted a timeout. The Bengals were in a wrong formation. And I don't remember the Bengals wasting a timeout like that all season long, Phil. Well, both Curtis and Collinsworth were lined up as a flanker. This time they're both back. Now Collinsworth goes in motion. Same formation to this point. Anderson goes back to throw. It's a four-man rush. Fires it downfield. A dive, and it was caught by Collinsworth down on the 28-yard line. Trying to cover him back there was Hacksaw Reynolds as he came up from his linebacking spot. And again, he just dove in front of Ronnie Lott to pull the ball down. And Anderson really drilled that one in the keyhole between Reynolds and Lott. And it was a dive and a catch by Collinsworth at the 28. Collinsworth came in motion right. He was picked up by Carlton Williamson, who was playing him soft. And Chris, with a quick cut into his left, made a diving grab for his first catch of the day. And that is the Bengals' first down at the 49er 28. 49ers lead at 7-0 here early in the second quarter. Now, Collinsworth and Curtis are slotted to the left. Two running backs. Alexander goes in motion to the right. And a Bengal lineman went across the field. It was Dave Lapham before the ball had ever been snapped, and he cut down Dwayne Board, and that is going to cost the Bengals five yards. The Bengals had nine penalties in that first game that really hurt. Now they get down to the 28-yard line. Dave Lapham misses the count, and it'll be a five-yard walk-off. It will be first down and 15, now back at the 33. Bengals have had their opportunities early. Both Louis Breeden and Ken Riley have come close to interceptions. And Chris Collinsworth almost had uh, a long bomb touchdown pass, but Eric Wright knocked it right out of his fingers. So uh, the Bengals have come short in some very close situations. One of the interesting matchups, of course, is Anthony Munoz against Fred Dean when Dean is in the ball game. When he comes in, Dwayne Board, the regular right end, moves over to right tackle and generally will be the responsibility of Lapham. So first and 15 at the 33. Alexander out wide to the left. The receivers split on opposite sides. Anderson with a long count. Four-man rush. Rolls back. Fires it downfield. Ross did not quite hold on to the ball down at the 10-yard line. He made a one-handed effort, but apparently did not control the ball. He had drifted down deep, but was off into the right flat and was open. He reached up with one hand, came down, maintaining that he had caught the ball, but the official said no, he did not. Ross had his man beat. Grabbed it with one hand, but uh, the ball bounced off the turf as he gathered it in. Ross was a big factor in the first game between these two teams. He caught six or seven passes. 
That is one of that is the second longest pass that the Bengals have thrown all afternoon. The go pattern to Collinsworth had been the longest one. This one down to the eight-yard line, and it was just about a foot too long. So now it'll be second and 15 at the 49er 33. Collinsworth and Curtis on opposite sides. Anderson is back to throw. Looks, fires it down. Same play. The flag and interference is going to be called. Icy Curtis was bumped down at the 15-yard line by Lynn Thomas, who had become the fifth defensive back. And that bump along the 15-yard line was very, very obvious. And that will give the Bengals an automatic first down. Lynn Thomas, the rookie out of Pittsburgh, had single coverage, and it looked like he had a pretty good beat on Isaac Curtis, but he bumped him with the shoulder and threw Curtis off stride before the ball got there, and an obvious interference call against the San Francisco defensive back. So that'll be a five-yard penalty that will take the ball back to the original line of scrimmage at the 28-yard line, and once again, the Bengals will have a first down at that point. Here's Pat Haggerty. The Bengals, who had a second and 15, now have a first and 10 at the 49er 28-yard line. The 49ers lead in the ball game 7 to nothing. After the turnover, the interception by Dwight Hicks down at the 5 that he ran out to the 32, they proceeded 68 yards to score the first time they had the ball. Eric Wright will have Collinsworth to the left. Ronnie Lott well off the line of scrimmage at the right side on Curtis. And a handoff into the line, it's Alexander. Charlie will get to about the 27, and that is about all. A lot of white jersey 49ers surround him there. Willie Harper, the linebacker, one of the first men to get to him. Very aggressive tackling by the 49ers. Craig Pukey was also in in the south. They'll put it to the 27, give Alexander one. It will be second and nine. Ken Anderson now has completed five out of nine for 45 yards. He's thrown one interception. He's completed only one of his last four passes, and that was the big one down inside the 30 to Chris Collinsworth on this drive. Five defensive changes for the 49ers. 12-40 left here in the second quarter. One running back, two tight ends, two wide receivers. Anderson is back to throw. It's a four-man rush. Looking, fires it downfield, the five-yard line. It is caught down there by Collinsworth. He lost the ball, and did the 49ers have it? Collinsworth had the ball shaken loose. It looked as though he were down, but coming up with the ball was Saladin Martin, and again, brother Lynn Thomas, and again the Bengals, as they did in that first game, dashed down close only to lose the football and the 49ers will take over at their own seven-yard line. It was the deep post being run by Collinsworth. He caught the ball, but then lost it as he was in the process of being hit and going down. There's time out on the field with the score. The 49ers seven, and the Bengals nothing. The Bengals commit their second turnover of the ball game. Chris Collinsworth caught a Ken Anderson pass at the San Francisco five. He was stripped of the ball by the rookie defensive back Eric Wright. And Lynn Thomas, another rookie defensive back for the 49ers, recovered at the eight-yard line. So the Bengals have had terrible luck in turning the ball over against San Francisco. Give the Niner defense plenty of credit. They hit like a ton of bricks. It looks like a carbon copy of the first ball game. Johnny Davis and Bill Ring are the running backs now as the 49ers take over at their own eight. Hand off into the left side, spinning away and just getting out to the nine-yard line as Johnny Davis, their short yardage man. The fourth-year man from Alabama, and he's pulled down by Wilson Whitley, Reggie Williams, Bo Harris. Whitley really had the middle jammed up that time, and there wasn't much room as Davis tried to cut back. He got the ball to the nine-yard line, I believe. We can't see it from here, the way the Bengals are gathered around it. But it will be second down and nine. 49ers continue to play very conservatively deep in their own territory. I wouldn't be surprised if they pulled something tricky here, though. They have Clark in tight, a wide receiver out to the left. Montana will hand it off at his ring this time, gets out to the 10-yard line, and he is pulled down right there. A great play that time by Ross Browner, who went right through the man who was leading the interference, John Ayers, the guard who pulled out, and Browner went right through him and got to the ball carrier ring, and it looked as though he may have pulled him down by his jersey just beyond the 10-yard line after a gain of a couple. It'll now be third down and seven. This is the second series where the Niners have had terrible field position, starting at their own 10 and their own 8, and they've played it very close to the best, keeping the ball on the ground, afraid of that turnover so close to their own goal line. 
Bauman and Clark come out wide to the right. Now they bring ring in motion. Montana rolls out to his right, is back to throw. Fires it upfield. It is caught and out of bounds. Solomon at the 31-yard line. Ian Clark lined up on that side. Clark continued deep. Solomon cut to the sideline in behind him. And the 49ers are out of trouble with a pass play of about 20 yards out to the 31. Montana rolled away to his right that time. They sent them both down the right side, and then Solomon cut to the sideline, and they have a first and 10 at their own 31. Looks like Freddie Solomon is okay. He's cut three balls for 43 yards so far. Joe Montana, six out of eight for 69. Now they're back to their first ring running backs, Cooper and Patton, and they put Solomon and Clark on opposite sides. The back's offset to the left. Montana is back to throw. Now he's being flushed out of the pocket. He's going to run. He's at the 30. We'll get to about the 38 and go out of bounds there with Ross Browner, his former teammate at Notre Dame in hot pursuit. But give him about seven or eight yards on the run. It was not designed that way. He had no one open, and a heavy pass rush forced him out, and Montana turned it into an eight-yard gain out to the 39. The 49ers lead it 7 nothing. 10-52 is the time remaining in the half. And, of course, in the first ball game, won by the 49ers, 21-3, it was the only game this year that the Bengals have not scored a touchdown. Solomon goes out, kind of favoring that left knee. Mike Wilson comes in as the wide receiver. First and 10, 49ers at their own 39. Slot left, one wide receiver to the right. It's a pitch off, Cooper coming to the left. He's at the 40, cuts into the 45 and all the way to the Bengals' 48-yard line. Ryan Hicks missed the tackle on him back at about the 43. And it sounds like booze, but really they're saying coop, coop, like they do Pete. Well, the Bengals and Cameron and Breeden finally had to haul him down. A run to the right. He got past kicks, bowled over midfield to the Bengals' 48-yard line, and that is a run of about 13 yards. Now the 49ers can use all their offensive weapons, and they have a very diversified offense. They're out of the shadow of their own goalposts, and they can really open things up the way they like to. Mike Wilson comes to the right. Dwight Clark goes left. Running backs are Cooper and Patton. This time they offset to the right. The ball is at the Bengals' 48. Now they take a split behind Montana. He'll give the ball up to Patton, who cuts into the 45 and is knocked down at the 44. Running in through the right side, and he went down there in the grasp of safety Bobby Kemp. So it is a gain of about four yards, however, as he wiggled his way in through the right side. And a gain of four, well, make it about five as they put it down at the 43. It will be second down and five. The clock ticking away down the 940. Don't forget the Bengals' official welcome home party tomorrow, 1 o'clock on Fountain Square. Solomon back of the ball game is to the right. Breeden has him. Dwight Clark with Riley on the left. Montana is back to throw. Fires it out in the flat, incomplete, down at the 35. Solomon was out of bounds before Montana could get the ball there. Louis Breeden and Bo Harris had double coverage on him over at this side. And at the Bengals' 48-yard line now, it becomes third down and five. Ray Griffin... Burley and St. Clair check in as the Bengals will go on out of the nickel defense. Reggie Williams has been coming a lot from that right side, but he is only the fourth man. The Bengals really have not done a lot of blitzing in this ball game. The ball is at the Bengals' 43-yard line. It is third down and five. Slot left. Now they bring Clark in motion over to the right side. Montana is back to throw. Now he's going to run back at his own 45. Throws it upfield. It's caught by Clark at the 35, and he'll be knocked down at the 33. Clark came back from downfield to meet the play as Montana was flushed out to his left. And Bo Harris and Lou Breeden finally got him. But not until that broken play results in a first down down at the Bengals' 32-yard line. Great improvising by Dwight Clark. Bengals had Clark surrounded in the middle of the field. He uh, made a quick cut to the outside, though, and he and Montana just have a sixth sense about where each other's going to be, and uh, just a super catch by Clark as he gets the first down. Now Jim LeClaire, who was over the sideline, checks back in. The ball is at the Bengal 32-yard line, a 49er first down. Patton and Earl Cooper are the running backs. Now Wilson comes in motion to the right side. The handoff into the line, a big hole, and Ricky Patton thunders all the way down to the 22-yard line. Ricky Patton with his head down, both hands on the ball, just plunged right into the secondary, and Riley and Hicks dropped him. But not until he got very close to 10 yards on the play. The ball is just shy of the 22-yard line, 
And it will be second down and less than a yard to go for the first down. Bengals missing a lot of tackles. Bob Trumpy has just noted that Wilson Whitley is playing on a gimpy leg, and uh, Wilson's now been replaced at the nose tackle by Rod Horn, I believe. Yeah, yeah they have been alternating on these series in the last few ball games. Second down and short yardage for the 49ers. It goes to Patton. He sneaks inside the 20, straight up the middle to maybe the 18. And the 49ers again have the first down. Nothing fancy. He just plugged his way right through the middle. LeClaire and Reggie Williams brought him to a halt. And the 49ers, leading 7-0, have a first down now at the Bengals' 19-yard line. Apparently, Wilson Whitley has bruised or bumped the left knee. He's talking to Dr. Wally Temperman on the sideline. I think he might have done something very early in the game because it seemed like he was limping on that first Bengal defensive series. But he is out of the game, and Rod Horn remains in a nose tackle. Whitley has been having trouble with his elbow for a while, but now it is that right knee. Solomon goes in motion over to the left side. Montana on an end around. It goes to Dwight Clark. He's going to get to the 22-yard line. He'll be dragged right down there by Louis Breen. The flag is down. A Bengal got a late hit along the sideline, and that is going to be a personal foul. Dwight Clark was out of bounds, and that is a very, very costly one because they had stopped the play for a loss of a couple of yards. And let's see if they're going to call a clip on the 49ers or a late hit against the Bengals. We've had motions both ways from the teams. We'll see what the officials do. It was Jim LeClaire who came in with a shoulder. Louis Breeden wrestled Clark out of bounds, and the penalty will go against Cincinnati on the late hit by Jim LeClaire. LeClaire had a late hit, a costly one in the first ball game against the 49ers. Number 55, defense, first down. So it is first down now, and the 49ers are down at the Bengals' 10-yard line. They lead in the ball game 7-0 with 7:01 left to play. 49ers have a slot left. Solomon and Clark. Montana is back to throw. Looks forwards off into the flat. It's caught by Cooper at the five touchdown. Earl Cooper drifted off into the left flat. Nobody picked him up over there, and he caught the ball all by himself at the five-yard line out of the left flat. A couple of Bengals were at the goal line, but he pulled his way through them, and the 49ers go out and pop now by a score of 13 to nothing. A 10-yard touchdown pass from Montana to Cooper and a very, very well-conceived 49er offense has resulted in three or four wide-open receivers this afternoon. So far, it is a carbon copy of the first game. The Bengals got close, only to lose the ball. Worsing set to kick off. Squibs it along the ground. Picked up finally by Verser. Drops the ball at the seven-yard line. At the five, he's going to be hammered down back there. A squib kick that the Bengals were unable to field. We have a flag down on the play at about the five-yard line. Verser was hammered down at the three. Rick Jervis, one of the first men to get to him, and let's see what this penalty flag is going to be. Verser had trouble with it after a Bengal let the ball go right by him at the 15-yard line where he had a good opportunity to pick it up, but did not. And as a result, the Bengals are really in a deep hole. See if we get an illegal push from behind. Also stopped by number 53, Milt McCall. We do, and the Bengals are going to find themselves back uh, maybe at about the two-yard line. That's the second kickoff that Wershing has squibbed. Obviously, they know about David Verser's thumb injury. He just got the cast off today. And that time, Verser had difficulty picking up that bouncing football. And the Bengals are in brutal field position down at their own two. With six minutes and 42 seconds left in the half. The Bengals got to get the ball out of there just as the 49ers did in the previous drive. Pete Johnson is the sole back. Curtis goes out to the right. To the left side comes Collinsworth. They have two tight ends in the ball game. Anderson with a handoff. Pete Johnson rips his way through the left side behind Munoz out to about the six-yard line where he's pulled down by Dwayne Board along with Hacksaw Reynolds, one of the inside linebackers. Give Pete four in the play out to the six. It will be second down and six. The clock running 6.22 is the time left here in the first half. The Bengals have to get on the scoreboard. They trail 14 to nothing. Stay with us during halftime. Bob Truppy will join me for an analysis of the first half of Super Bowl 16. Bengals ready to go. The two wide receivers out to the left. Second and six at their own six. 
Anderson goes back to throw. It's that four-man rush. Looks, fires it up. The middle is caught by Ross at the 10. He'll cut to the 15 and has the first down. Danny Ross catching a pass right over the middle. He came from the left side, cut over the middle, left to right, took the ball at about the 11 or 12-yard line and got it up to the 15. And the Bengals temporarily are out of trouble as they have a first down. Second reception for Dan Ross. Ken Anderson now 7 out of 11 for 76. He's throwing one interception. Bengals come out with Collinsworth to the left. Curtis out to the right. One running back and the two tight ends. Four defensive linemen in the ball game for the 49ers. Fred Dean is the right end. Boards at right tackle. Anderson again back to throw. Looks, fires out in the flat. Curtis can't hold on to it. A pass a little bit out in front of him. Ronnie Lott was over covering at about the 28-yard line. Curtis may have gotten one hand on that ball, but could not pull it in. So it'll come back to the 15-yard line. It will be second down and 10. It stops the clock with 5.15 left here in the first half. And the Bengals have played the 49ers now for a total of 80 minutes of football. In fact, 85, and have not scored a touchdown. Got a golden opportunity after recovering a fumble on the opening kickoff but a quick interception ended that. Second down and 10, Bengals at their own 15. Munoz cut Dean, back to throw is Anderson. He's in the grasp, upfield. It goes right through Dan Ross's hands at the 20-yard line. A great bit of scrambling that time by Kenny Anderson to get away from one man. And then Ross not quite expecting that quick flip of about seven or eight yards and the usually sticky finger Dan Ross had that one go right through his hand. He may have been able to work his way upfield for a first down had he held on to the ball. He was about five yards beyond the line of scrimmage. Now it becomes third down and ten. Bengals did a good job of picking up Fred Dean that time. They had two people on him and Dean didn't get close to the quarterback so that's a positive sign for Cincinnati. Now Steve Kreider in the ball game for the first, second time as the third wide receiver. All three are to the left. Four-man rush, back to throw Anderson upfield, a dive and a catch at the 24 by Ross. He was not down, he gets to the 25, and very close to what was needed for the first down, but I believe that he is going to be about a foot short. Let's see where they spot the ball. He will be, and the Bengals' putting team goes on in. Ross is about two feet short of a first down, as the nose of the ball is just short at the 25-yard line. 49er defensive backs are doing a good job in single coverage against the Bengal wide receivers, and that's allowed San Francisco to send a lot of people on the blitz and put pressure on the quarterback. Good coverage by the San Francisco DBs so far. Fred Solomon and Dwight Hicks back in the vicinity of the 30. Here's the snap back, a big rush. McAnally really gets a high, lofting kick away that Hicks will take at the 27. Comes up to the 30, to the 34-yard line. It'll be knocked down at about the 33. He just put his head down when he saw a lot of Bengals coming. Rookie John Simmons, along with Jim Hargrove, there to get him. There's time out on the field with a score of the 49ers, 14, and the Bengals nothing. The Bengal defense has not shown that it can stop the San Francisco offense. The 49ers have driven 68 and 92 yards for touchdowns. And the only time the Bengal defense really stopped San Francisco was when the Niners were saddled with terrible field position and really couldn't show all the tools in their offense. Now, their, now is the time, right now. They're at their own 34-yard line. Davis and Patton are the running backs. They send Solomon in motion to the left. The handoff, fake handoff. Montana back to throw. Fires it up the middle. It's caught by Clark. And he is at midfield and down to the Bengals' 49-yard line. Bobby Kemp called him down. A good play-action fake that time by Montana. And Dwight Clark catching those short-range passes, as he does so well, winds up with a gain of about 17 yards to the Bengals' 49-yard line. Just a short hook by Dwight Clark. He found that uh, seam in the zone over the middle. Wide open. Ready to go. They have a slot left. Hand off into the line this time as Ricky Patton. He hammers his way in the right side, gets a couple of yards maybe to the 46. And he has stopped there. Wilson Whitley came over from the middle guard spot to make the tackle. Jim LeClaire also in there. And the ball is short of the 46-yard line. So it's a gain actually of about two and a half yards. And it will be second down and seven and a half. 
The 49ers on top here by a score of 14 to nothing. The Bengals have been closed twice, only to lose the ball on an interception the first time, a fumble the second time. We're down to about the three-minute mark here in this first half. Now they bring Mike Wilson and Dwight Clark to the right. Hand off again is Patton cutting back, and he's got some room, and as he gets down to the 40, down to the 39-yard line before Reggie Williams can wrestle down his old high school teammate. Some help from Ross Browner, and it's very close to the 7.5 yards they needed for the first down as the ball is just over the Bengals' 40. It is at the 39, and it is a first down. 49ers are really attacking successfully on the ground between the tackles. They're going right at Wilson Whitley, who's back in the ball game, despite some sort of a slight knee injury and in the first game they ran more outside but uh, in this ball game they're attacking the middle of the Bengal defense successfully on the ground time left 215 here in the first half the game has been dominated by the 49ers they have a tight formation here in the first and ten now Cooper moves over a step to his right and there's a big split behind Montana Montana play action is back to throw. Sets up the screen. Out to Cooper on the right at the 35, and he'll be shoved out of bounds right there. Jim LeClaire hit him first, and then Louis Breeden came over to help out. Just a little swing to the right to Cooper he is good for maybe four yards down to the 35-yard line. And it stops the clock as we are at the two-minute warning. There's timeout on the field. From Super Bowl 16 at the Pontiac Silverdome, San Francisco is really milking that clock, Phil, working it down the way they did in that final drive when they scored the winning touchdown against Dallas two weeks ago. They know they have enough time to run the football, and uh, they don't want the if they score, they don't want the Bengals to have any time left to, to get a late one before the half. They have all three timeouts remaining, a minute 57 left, and they have a second and six just short of the Bengal 35. I send Charlie Young in motion over to left. Montana back to throw. The blitz is on. He throws it in a hurry. And the ball is incomplete. He threw it to Young. Glenn Cameron nailed him. The blitz was on that time. Bo Harris was coming up the middle. Reggie Williams was coming. And he, Montana really had to get that ball off in a hurry. Let's pause 15 seconds for station identification. This is the Cincinnati Bengals Football Network. Gary Burbank mornings, Debbie Connor middays, Jim LaBarbera afternoons, Bob Trumpy sports talk, Lynn Riley evenings, and TalkNet, the new number one lineup in 82 from WLW, Cincinnati. Now Braden and Riley have shifted sides, and it's third and six. Montana's back to throw. Again, the blitz is on, fires it up the middle. There's a pop down at the 25-yard line. I believe it is a reception down there by... Dwight Clark and he is really hammered and getting up rather slowly after he was nailed down there he ran a slant caught the ball amidst a couple of Bengal men Riley had changed over from the right cornerback to the left cornerback spot to cover Clark man for man Clark got to the inside caught the ball it's a first down at the 25 now Mike Schumann goes in to replace Clark who was shaken up slightly on the last play Freddie Solomon is the flanker off to the left and off to Ricky Patton, running wide around the right side. Ross Browner from behind can't slow him up, but he does a little. He gets inside the 25 and goes out of bounds at the 23. Ross did a heck of a job. He penetrated the, the interference in front of the, the running back, Patton, and got a hand on him and just shoved him out of bounds. So again, that good quickness by Browner made that slow developing San Francisco sweep really not to do too much. Well, it took him time to get both guards pulling out that time. John Ayers and Randy Cross to lead the play. It gained three yards to the 22, and it will be second down and seven, and Dwight Clark is back in the ball game. He was only out for one play. With a minute and six seconds left, the 49ers lead it 14 to nothing. They are down at the Bengals' 22. Solomon goes in motion from right to left. Clark is lined up tight on the left side. A handoff to Cooper. Rips his way inside down just short of the 15-yard line before Browner and Glenn Cameron could haul him down. They had a trap in there. Now Montana looking for a timeout with 55 seconds left and gets it. That run is good for about six yards to the 16. And it will be third down and less than a yard to go for the first down as the 49ers expend their first timeout. They still have two remaining. They are inexorably on the move. They score the ball back at their own 34-yard line after McAnally's punt. They scored the last series they had, a 10-yard pass from Montana to Cooper. 
And after the Bengals were unable to make a first down from deep in their own territory after that kickoff, they took the punt and have come right back and are threatening again. And Andy, the Bengals can ill afford to be behind 21 to nothing, even 17 to nothing. 14 to nothing is bad enough. Bengals would have to come out of their game plan down 21 nothing at the half and just fill the air with footballs, and that certainly is not the way to, to beat the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, they, the way they're running the football, the 49ers show they can control the clock, and uh, if they know you're going to throw on every down, San Francisco is going to be teeing off up front, and with their opportunistic defensive back, it's going to be tough to overcome a three-touchdown deficit, so the Bengals have to come up big on defense here. Their offensive line of Audic and Fonhorst to tackles, Ayers and Cross at guards, and Quillen at center has done an outstanding job of blocking. The ball is at the 16-yard line. It is only a matter of maybe a foot short of a first down. The clock is stopped with 54 seconds left to play. 49ers are getting six, seven yards a crack on the runs, and uh, that's just setting up their passing game and really putting an awful lot of pressure on the Bengal defense. Joe Montana was over talking to head coach Bill Waltz. And the 49ers in a huddle now, ready to go. Of course, the Walt story, how he was with the Cincinnati Bengals for eight years, has been rehashed over and over and over again this week. Third down, short yardage for the 49ers at the Bengals' 16. Cooper and Patton offset to the left. Dwight Clark is in tight. So is Young. Montana on a keeper, dives inside the 15 to the 14 and has the first down. Montana scored their first touchdown on a one-yard keeper play. He gets a first down here. Everybody in the middle piled in and brought him down on the stop. So they'll go without a huddle this time as the clock is down to 37 seconds. Now they send Solomon out of the backfield over to the left. The Bengals are coming, fires it over into the flat. Solomon catches it and is wrestled out of bounds by Breeden at the five. The Bengals again had a blitz on, but they couldn't get to him. And Freddie Solomon, who went in motion from the right over to the left, just continued out into the left flat. And Louis Breeden had to wrestle him right down at the five-yard line. That's about a nine-yard gain. And it will be second down and one. And it stops the clock with 29 seconds left to play. In that first ball game, they scored on a touchdown pass to Dwight Clark with just about three seconds left in the first half of the ball game. Now they're down knocking at the door with a 14-point lead and 29 seconds left. It is second and about two make it at the Bengal five. Montana rolling out to his right. Looking, fires up field and dropped right at the goal line. Ryan Hicks got a hit on Charlie, or rather Dwight Clark, and then Cameron came up and finished him off. And he coughed up the ball right at the goal line. And that's the play that Maxie Bond, the Lions defensive coordinator, said for a story in a paper they probably would have something like that Montana rolling out to his right and then looking for Clark that time Hicks may have got a hand on the ball but Clark could not hold on to it so at the five yard line it is now third and one 23 seconds left make it third and two 23 seconds left in the half Montana again goes back to throw now he fires this one and this one he does throw way away as the blitz was on Charlie Young was the closest guy to it. Cameron was hounding him. Also in on top of him was Eddie Edwards, and the Bengals have held, and now Ray Wershing will come in for an apparent field goal attempt with 18 seconds left. Well, there was no Dwight Clark, Andy, cutting along the end zone on that one. That obviously was thrown away, and Dwight Clark would have had to be 10 feet 4 inches tall to have reached that one had he been in the vicinity. I think the tight end Charlie Young was the nearest uh, 49er, and yeah. he was about... Uh, 10 yards away. That was definitely a throwaway. One of the NFL's most accurate field goal kickers, Wershing, will attempt a 22-yarder. The ball is up, and it is good. So with just 15 seconds left, Ray Wershing gets a 23-yard field goal, and the 49ers, barring something quick by the Bengals, are going into this dressing room with a large lead. It is 17 to nothing. That was a 22-yard field goal. Wershing has not missed under 30 yards all year long. And it is 17 to nothing with just 15 seconds left here in this first half. The Bengals have coughed up the ball a couple of times, and the 49ers have been able to roll down the field with both of them. It was not exactly a quick turnover that set it up because they moved 92 yards with the ball one time after they got the fumble. They moved 68 yards the other time. Montana getting a tremendous amount of time to throw the ball, and he has completed 
12 of 18 for 126 yards. Four receptions by Dwight Clark. All of them big ones. All third down catches to keep drives going. And Freddie Solomon has caught four for 52. This time the Bengal wedge men are talking things over. So Bravik, Archie Griffin, and Blake Moore. The last time the Bengals really got into a deep hole when one of the wedge men, just like the kickoff, bounced right by him. And the Bengals couldn't field the ball until Verser picked it up down about the five. He was knocked down at the four. The Bengals were penalized to the two and really had themselves a problem. And that punt resulting from that series eventually led to this late San Francisco field goal. So now Wershing will kick off for the third time. He has squibbed the first two, lined them. So Wershing set to kick off. Again, he'll squib it along the ground. It'll be picked up by Archie Griffin. Drops it, and Archie finally gets the ball. It's knocked down. It is loose. And let's see who has it. The big scramble down at the four-yard line. And the Bengals playing kick the can with the ball. And the 49ers may have it. One official signal that way, but a big scramble down there. The Bengals just cannot get their hands on those bouncing kickoffs. and shoving around down there. Ronnie Lott is mad, and the 49ers do have the ball down at about the four-yard line. The last man up off the bottom of the pile is number 53, Milt McCall. With five seconds left, Wershing is going to try a field goal right here. Instead of just flopping on the ball and being safe, Griffin tried to pick it up, tried to run with it. The ball got away from him. He was hit just as he was in the process of picking it up. And the 49ers, McCall recovered at the five-yard line. They'll make it the four-yard line. So Worsing, just 10 seconds ago, kicked a 22-yard field goal. This one will be about 21. Joe Montana will hold. And the Bengals have a couple of men who go offside. Let's see if they were drawn. It isn't much more than an extra point attempt right here. They were drawn offside by a couple of San Francisco linemen down this short. It doesn't make much difference. So the Bengals hoping to hold them off and not be behind any more than 14 to nothing find themselves now with a very likely possibility that they'll be trailing 20 to nothing at the end of this first half. So the ball has moved back to the nine yard line. Montana will put this one down at the 16. This will be a 26 yard attempt. Fumble fingers by the Bengals on a kickoff that really hurt them. Wershing's kick is up and it is good. So with only two seconds left, it is a 20 to nothing football game as Wershing gets his second field goal in about a 13 second period. The 49er fans on the far side of the field really up and Archie Griffin made a very tactical error that time by not falling on that kick and making sure that the Bengals got the ball. They got away from him. When he tried to pick it up, he was nailed, and the 49ers wind up with the ball and get a quick field goal to make it 20 to nothing. 49ers certainly are opportunistic. Uh, they were way plus in turnovers. In fact, they led the National Football League in plus 23 in the turnover department this season, and they're plus two in this ball game. Bengals have fumbled twice and thrown one interception, the 49ers, with the uh, the one turner turnover so far that the Bengals weren't able to capitalize on. So San Francisco is staying in form. They've been opportunists all year, and they continue in this game. They got three turnovers. Three of them have resulted in scores after they got the ball. Now this time Griffin drops out of the wedge and drops back at about the 10-yard line. They obviously do not want to kick that ball to Verser. They have not in three kickoffs. Let's see about this one. This one again is squibbed along the ground. And the Bengals would just flop on this ball and have it at the 28-yard line. And again, some uh, players out there pushing and shoving a little bit. Tina Turner's all hot to get in there. He wasn't involved in it in the first place, but the first half has come to a close. And this is a 20 to nothing football game, and the Bengals are going to have to have a tremendous second half if they're to get back into this. Andy McWilliams will join us shortly. We'll have it a long halftime. He'll analyze the first half of today's game and the halftime activities. Our score at halftime here at the Silverdome is the 49ers 20 and the Bengals nothing.
Bengals trailed 20 to nothing. They have played 90 minutes of football against the 49ers and have not yet scored a touchdown. They were down close twice, only to lose the ball. And that, of course, gave them a gift field goal right at the end of the first half. That's the biggest margin any team has ever had at halftime in a Super Bowl. And, of course, no team has ever come back from a deficit like this to win the Super Bowl. The Bengals' big problem, basically, against the 49ers is they just cannot get the ball in the end zone. The 49ers' offensive line, tackle to tackle, has done an outstanding job. The Bengals only had 99 yards in the first half of the ball game, and only 26 of those came on rushing. Well, the Bengals will get the ball to start this second half as the 49ers fumbled the opening kickoff and the Bengals were not able to turn it into anything. They wound up getting an interception that was run back by Dwight Hicks to the 32-yard line. And from there, they went 68 yards to score and they were off and running. The Bengals are going to really have to put the ball up in the air. They only had the ball for 23 plays in the first half of the ball game and are going to have to go to the air undoubtedly. In that first half, McAnally punted twice and uh, Miller only had to punt once in the ball game. The 49ers with two penalties and the Bengals with five. They had nine in the first game and it's all too reminiscent of that first game, Andy. It's going to be interesting to see what kind of kickoff strategy San Francisco employs. I imagine they'll squib the ball again. They've had excellent success in, in just bouncing the ball, forcing that uh, one fumble that led to their second field goal and their final score. And the Bengals just have not been able to handle that play at all. They've kicked off four times. All four have been squib kicks. And the Bengals certainly want to get this ball on the opening kickoff here of the second half and move it down the field if they're going to have a chance to really get that ball into the end zone and get themselves a quick touchdown. Bengals need some breaks, some big plays to give them a psychological lift. They need some light at the end of the tunnel, and hopefully it won't be a train coming at them at 90 miles an hour. There have been a couple of tremendous breakdowns on pass defense. The Earl Cooper touchdown, the pass that Solomon took down to the five-yard line. A very simple breakdown in coverage. The linebacker did not pick up Cooper. The Bengals were in a man-to-man -man defense naturally down at the 10-yard line or the 11. And on the other play, noticeably, Solomon just came in motion into the slot, veered off into the right, and there wasn't anybody within eight yards of him when he caught the ball. So Verser and Archie Griffin will go back deep now. The Bengals will be going left to right here in the Silverdome. Worsing will put the ball up at the 35-yard line. And they've been having a lot of luck with that squib kick, so there isn't any reason to expect that they would change. Blake Moore and Michael Bravik are the two men in the wedge back at the 20. Two other men, Rosano and Fraser, at the 30. So Wershing advances on the ball. This one he hammers high and is deep. And Verser will back up and take it right at the goal line. The wedge forms. He's up to the 10. Comes to the 15 and will get only to the 17. And one of the 49ers dove into that wedge and really took care of things. Rick Jervis made the tackle. Short of the 20, the ball is at the 17 after the good high kickoff by Wershing, and the Bengals will be starting out right there. The Bengals with Kenny Anderson, a quarterback. Alexander and Pete Johnson are in the backfield. Curtis and Collinsworth are the wide receivers. They go out to the left. The offensive line, the same. Munoz, Wilson, Lapham, Montoya, Blair Bush. The back's in an eye now with Alexander, the deep man. Anderson with a pitch back to Alexander. Rips up to the 15, to the 20, to the 25, and out of bounds, just short of the 30 at the 29. A flag thrown on the play right behind Alexander. And let's see what we're going to get is the call here. Alexander ripped to his right. Out about 12 yards, White Hicks pushed him out of bounds, and let's see who is going to get the penalty called. Here's Pat Haggerty. 49ers called for a face mask violation. Turns around and faces the Bengals, so let's get faced the other way. And they'll walk off the five-yard walk-off out to the 34-yard line. So the Bengals get a first down. Five more yards tacked on as a result of the face mask. They will have a first down at their own 34. Bengals come right out and uh, try to establish the running game. Charlie Alexander on that pitch right picked up excellent yardage. Bengals had uh, plenty of people out in front of him. The ball statistically is at the 35-yard line. The Bengals will send Collinsworth and Curtis out to the left. Alexander and Johnson take a split behind Anderson about five, four yards deep. Now Alexander comes in motion to the near side of the field. Anderson with a deep pitch out to Pete. Gets a block from Charlie. Will get to the 37, 38-yard line and will be run out of bounds right there. 
Willie Harper, the linebacker, was over there to force Pete Johnson out of bounds, but it's going to be a gain of about four, make it three to the 38, and it will bring up a second down and seven. The Bengals trail 20 to nothing and really have to get the offense cooking on the off-mentioned front burner to get back into this thing. Turn up that heat to extra high. Oh, yeah. Ben goes out to establish that running game early in the third quarter. Collinsworth goes left where Wright picks him up. Lot on Curtis to the near side. Now Alexander will come outside of Curtis on the right. Williamson, the safety, comes over to pick him up. Anderson play action. Back to throw. Fires on the flat. Alexander dives. Did he catch the ball at the 41-yard line? He did. Williamson was right on him right there. A little, a little pitch that was good for about three yards. Curtis went deep downfield. He was the guy that Anderson wanted to go to, but he was well covered over there by Ronnie Lott, and he had to settle for a three-yard shovel off to Alexander, and it'll bring up a third down and four. Alexander comes out of the ball game now. And we'll see if they go with the two tight ends or if Steve Kreider is checked in as the third wide receiver. It is Kreider in as the third wide. And the four defensive linemen in for San Francisco. Now Kreider goes left. All three wide receivers are over there. The flag is down. The 49ers were offside. Anderson fires it down the middle. Kreider grabs it in at the 49ers 40-yard line. Where he is pulled down by Ronnie Lott. Now the Bengals did not draw him offside. And they were offside. The Bengals will take the play and will be at the 49ers 40. Let's see what the call is going to be. It is offside 49ers. Fred Dean, the right end, was the man who jumped before the ball was snapped. And the Bengals will have a first down at the 49er 40 after a 19-yard gainer. Steve Kreider. Steve Kreider beat Ronnie Lott on single coverage on that deep slant. And Kreider has made the big plays all season for Cincinnati as that third wide receiver. And there's another case of a third down conversion for Cincinnati going to Steve Kreider. Collinsworth goes left. Curtis comes right. The Bengals need a quick score. Now Alexander shifts out of the eye into a split. And off Pete rips into the middle down to the 35-yard line. Greg Pookie over there to help pin him down after he was rolled down in the arms of middle guard Archie Reese. But the rip up the middle, well, the good block on Reese was good for five yards to the 35, and it will be second down and five. Give the Bengals a lot of credit. They've come out playing good basic football, hitting hard and establishing that ground game and throwing when they've had to. And uh, they've looked good here so far in this first series of the third quarter. Ford goes out, Pillars comes in. A slot left with Curtis and Collinsworth. Backs in an eye. The pitch back to the deep man, Griffin. I sends it back to Anderson. Kenny steps up. Fires on the flat at the 20-yard line. Isaac Curtis catches the ball and had to go to his knees. And a flag is down as somebody rammed the helmet into Curtis and piled on when he was down when all he had to do was touch him. A little razzle-dazzle unveiled. And the 49er culprit over there is Eric Wright, who likes to throw you an elbow, anything like that, any opportunity he gets. Curtis has a dive for that ball, pulled it in at the 23, and that will cost him half the distance to the goal line right there. Curtis was down on the ground after diving to come up with the ball, and then Eric Wright slammed into him. Gave him the helmet, a very obvious flagrant foul, something that Eric Wright is very good at doing. The ball will be at the 11, it'll be first down. There was a 49er linebacker lurking around Ken Anderson on that pitch back from Archie Griffin, and Dave Lapham made the big block to blow that linebacker right out of there and give Anderson time to throw the ball to Curtis. Well, the Bengals have been down here this close a couple of times as Anderson signals for quiet. They've been down there only to turn the ball away. Now Collinsworth and Curtis are right, and Wright comes over to help Lott out on that side. Hand off into the line, Alexander. It's Archie Griffin. Archie on his feet gets to the seven-yard line. And it'll be a stop there standing up. So Griffin was hit, bounced off a tackler at about the 10. Then motored down to somewhere in the vicinity of a seven-yard line before Dwight Hicks was able to stop him. It'll be a gain of about four, and it will be second down and six. So Archie Griffin has figured prominently in the last two plays. He was the man who pitched it back to Ken Anderson, and he carried the football there on first down to give Cincinnati a good position to operate now. If the Bengals can get this quick score, there still is some hope. They trail 20 to nothing. Now a double wing formation to the left. Anderson with the pitch back. It's Pete Johnson running left. Pete at the 10. 
Gets down to the 7 to the 6, maybe the 5 yard line before about 349ers, led by Craig Pookie and Fred Dean wrestled him down. He ran to his left, the end at which Dean is playing. Now the Bengals are going to be looking at a third down and still about 5 yards to go for the first down, the ball at the 6. Bengals have had their most success on this drive, running right away from Fred Dean. Dean is not a real tough man against the run himself. He got a lot of help with some good pursuit out there that time. And here's the big third and five play at the six. The Bengals have three men lined up in what looks like an old-fashioned tee. Now Curtis will come out in motion, and Anderson will go back to throw. Now he's going to run. 10-5, touchdown! Anderson drives into the end zone for a touchdown on a six-yard run. And the Bengals finally get on the scoreboard. And a 49er down on the goal line is shaken up where he was hit by one of his own teammates. So Kenny Anderson runs six yards for a touchdown. And the Bengals have scored the first touchdown this year in two games against the San Francisco 49ers. You can see the big hole in the middle, Andy. And when he saw it, he just decided to go. An 83-yard drive for Cincinnati. They take three minutes and 35 seconds to get right back into this football game. Great start to the third quarter. Anderson showed a lot of courage running into the teeth of that 49er defense. So Kreider will hold. Jim Breach will attempt the extra point. The lines are down. This might be a big one. It is 20 to 6. The ball is spotted down. Breach's kick is up and it's good. Flag down on the play. Hold the telephone. Now Pat Haggerty consulting and the Bengals holding their hands up to indicate that the penalty is against San Francisco. An illegal procedure. Maybe they had too many men on the field. So there's time out on the field with the score now. The 49ers 20 and the Bengals 7. Well, the 49ers made the mistakes on that drive. They couldn't handle the Bengal running game, and that set up the Bengal passing game. San Francisco took two very costly penalties, that face mask early on, and then the late hit penalty after the completion to Isaac Curtis. Saw the 49ers show they are human for the first time this year against the Bengals. That's right, and uh, obviously that opening game fumble by Amos Lawrence. The penalty is being marked off on the kickoff, so Breach will kick from the 40. Lawrence fumbled the opening kickoff. He is not in there to receive the second kickoff. It is Dwight Hicks along with Bill Rink. Breach will kick from the 40-yard line, and Tom Zinkel, who was shaken up in the first half, is back in the ball game. So Breach gets set to kick off. Hammers it down. It's a number that bounces at the five-yard line, and would you believe goes out of bounds before it gets to the goal line. And the Bengals... For the second time, I've tried to kick that ball to the left. Now we get a foul is going to be called on Bobby Leopold, apparently. A personal foul, something over in the far side of the field, away from the action, out near the 30-yard line. And let's see what we're going to get on the call from Pat Haggerty and how those two are going to offset each other. We'll come back. Here's Pat Haggerty. We have an illegal procedure with a kickoff out of bounds against the kicking team. A personal foul, number 52. After the play was over, a 15-yard penalty. We will enforce the 15-yard penalty only. So there is the first time this year that I can remember that that rule that was changed about three years ago where a 15-yard penalty has precedent over a five. So despite the fact that the ball was kicked out of bounds, this kickoff will come from the 45-yard line. Without a doubt, it should be so buried so far into the end zone that there'll be no run back or possibly they might try an onside kick. 20 to seven now, the Bengals got back in it and the hands team is going to come in for San Francisco. They're expecting that they might see an onside kick attempt. The Bengals took three minutes and 41 seconds to score a touchdown, and it is 20 to 7. Bengal head coach Forrest Gregg and special teams coach Bruce Coslin have just completed a discussion with uh, Tom Dinkle, special teams captain, and Rick Rosano, so the Bengals might have a rabbit up their sleeve or something up their sleeve here on this play. Well, the, Bengal, the 49ers are looking for an onside kick because they changed their kickoff reception unit. They have the guys with the good hands in there now. Bill Ring is up there, Dwight Hicks. Charlie Young, Leopold. The kickoff will come from the 49ers 45-yard line. So let's see what they do. 
Here's Brief. He kicks it along the ground and it bounces down through everybody and goes on into the end zone. So it'll be a touchback. It'll come out to the 20 yard line. And what the doctor is ordered right now for the Bengals is just to stop the 49ers right there and get that ball right back. Get another score and really get some momentum going. So the 49ers will take over at their own 20. Joe Montana, in the first half of the ball game, was not sacked. He was hurried a few times. He wound up hitting 12 out of 18 for 132 yards, an average of about seven yards and a tenth. Now Freddie Solomon, definitely favoring that left leg, comes out to the left. White Clark is at the right. The backs are off set. Now they send Earl Cooper in motion. Montana goes back to throw it. So safety blitz. Ross Browner got him back at the 10 yard line. Bobby Kemp came through on the inside, and Ross Browner came through from the outside. They blitzed on the first play, and they dropped Montana for the first time this afternoon back at the 10 yard line. And I kind of think that Bobby Kemp coming up the middle was the guy who made that play. Montana did not see Browner. He was blindsided there. Ross caught him just above the shoulder level, and Browner has played a strong game defensively for Cincinnati. He's turned in a couple of good plays against the rush, and now he registers the Bengals' first quarterback sack of the afternoon. So to second down at about 19 and a half, back comes outside the 10. Clark and Solomon on opposite sides. Montana back to throw. This time he's going for the long one. Downfield for Solomon. A jump. Who has the ball? Nobody. Solomon and Brian Hicks were wrestling for the ball in the air. And for that split second, it appeared that Solomon might have it. But then the ball was wrestled away from him, and it fell incomplete. So it'll come all the way back to the 10-yard line. Now it will be third and 20. Louis Breeden went up with Freddie Solomon. The ball was juggled. Solomon looked like he might have had possession there for a moment. Hicks came over and gave him a lick. The ball popped loose, but they ruled it an incompletion. Looked like Montana hung the pass a bit. So the ball comes all the way back to the 10-yard line. Now the Bengals need a big play on defense to stop them right here, force the punt from deep in their own territory, and get it right back. They send out Wilson to the right, White Clark to the left. Montana hands off around the right side, cutting to the 14-yard line, and Reggie Williams nails Ricky Patton. They only get about four or five yards on the run, and the Bengals have what they want. They will force the 49ers to punt from their own 15-yard line. And at least the crowd, if it is any indication, senses that maybe the momentum here has swung over to the Bengals after the 49ers dominated the first half completely and had a 20 to nothing lead. Big play by Ross Browner on that first down, putting San Francisco in difficult down and distance situations. And they really conceded on that third down play, running the sweep right. Jim Miller, the barefooted kicker for a punter for San Francisco. Mike Fuller, the sole safety, back at the Bengals 45-yard line. There's the snap back to Miller. A big rush is on, but he gets it away. A good high spiral. And Fuller will back up to about the 38. Comes up to the 40, to the 45, 50, and down to the 49ers 49-yard line. As Mike Fuller really picked his way through, about three or four 49ers coming downfield, and the Bengals have excellent field position. There's time out in the field. With the score, the 49ers 20, and the Bengals 7. The Bengal fans here at the Silver Dome have finally found something to yell about. They're on their feet, chanting, here we go, Bengals, as Cincinnati has scored an early third-quarter touchdown. They have held the 49ers on a quick series and now they get the ball back in excellent field position just into San Francisco territory at the 49 yard line the Bengals did it successfully last time they had the ball filled by establishing the run in that nine play drive they ran the ball six times and they only threw when it was to their advantage to throw the football so again I imagine they'll come out and try to ram this ball right down the 49ers throw. They did have good luck running it on that last series as they did in the first game. Alexander goes wide to the left outside Collinsworth. The three-man defensive front now for the 49ers. Anderson with a handoff. It's Pete Johnson ripping into the line. Pete gets about three yards, but the going is tough. He's stacked up at the 49ers 46. Let's pause 15 seconds for station identification. This is the Cincinnati Bengals football network. The home of the American Football Conference champion Cincinnati Bengals and the flagship station of the Cincinnati Bengals Football Network. This is WLW Cincinnati. A 
49ers make four defensive substitutions. A gain of three, it'll be second and seven at the 49er 46. Alexander outside of Curtis to the right, only Pete Johnson. A quick shot out to Collinsworth. He can't hold on to it as he tried to set up a screen out there. Well, the 49ers had the play well covered over on that side. Collinsworth took one step downfield. The pass was a little low, down about knee high. And he went down and tried to come up with it, but could not. So now a big third and seven play at the 49er 46-yard line. Dan Ross will come out. Alexander comes out. Steve Kreider will check in as the third wide receiver, and David Verser is in the ball game. Now, Verser, Kreider, and Collinsworth are the... Oh, they've got four wide receivers. This is the first time we've seen much of this four wide receiver formation since back in the Pittsburgh game. A three-man rush back to throw is Anderson. Looks off to his right. Now it's the 45-yard line will be run out of bounds as he can't get the ball away. Bobby Leopold was over there to push him out of bounds. He just about got back to the line of scrimmage, and that was all. So the Bengals were able to make only three yards, and now McAnally will go in the ball game for an apparent punt. They got the four wide receivers in. Dave Verser became the fourth, but nothing materialized at all. So now again, it is Hicks and Freddie Solomon back as the twin safeties if it is to be a punt, and you have to think that it will be. Collinsworth getting a little equipment repair along the sideline. They're standing back on the 10-yard line. The line of scrimmage is the 46. There's a good snap back to McAnally. He angles it high into the air. Fair catch called for by Solomon at the 15, and he takes it right there. A flag is down on the play. Back at the line of scrimmage, and uh, let's see if we had a man downfield too quickly for the Bengals. man downfield, number 36. We did. We had Jim Hargrove leaving, going downfield before the ball was punted. And we'll see what the 49ers do with it. If they decline the penalty, they will have the ball right at their own 15-yard line. It looks as though they are going to decline it. They are. And they will take over the ball at their 15. So the Bengals getting just what they wanted, a score on the first series, and then good field position on the second. Could not move the football and have been forced to give it up. It's a 20 to 7 football game, and there's time out on the field with the score of the 49ers 20 and the Bengals 7. We want to remind you of the official a welcome home party for the Cincinnati Bengals tomorrow on Fountain Square in downtown Cincinnati at 1 p.m. Gary Burbank and Jim LaBarbera from WLW will be there at noon to help you get ready to welcome the Bengals home from Pontiac. And that'll be 1 o'clock tomorrow at the Fountain, the official Bengals welcome home party. They put Charlie Young in a slot left. Actually, a double wing formation. Wide receivers on both sides. Now he goes in motion to the far side of the field. Monsanto with the pitch back to Earl Cooper. There's no place to go, and he's going to be nailed for a loss. LeClaire and Browner get him back at about the 12-yard line. Again, they pulled the two guards, but they couldn't clear out the Bengals. Reggie Williams, along with Ross Browner, just pursued along the line of scrimmage. LeClaire cut through from behind, and they nailed Cooper for a loss of a couple of yards back to the 13. Now it'll be second down and 12. That little pitch play was working for the 49ers in the first half, but not in the second, as Cincinnati is getting much better penetration. And again, Ross Browner has been the man leading the charge. So he'll send Solomon out to the right. They have Clark tight on the left side. Second down and 12. 49ers at their own 13. Montana play action. Hands off the ring around the right side. Eddie Edwards will wrap him up and they knock him down right at the 13, right at the line of scrimmage. When Edwards got hold of him with wrestling him, Harris, Kemp, and Hicks really got there in a hurry. He may have gained a yard on the play, but now it'll bring up a third down and about 11. So the Bengals' defense is stiff. It was 1-2-3 and punt the first time the 49ers had the ball. Now Burley, St. Clair, and Ray Griffin check in as the Bengals will go to the nickel. Mike Wilson has gone in to replace Fred Solomon at wide receiver for the 49ers. Wilson will go out to the right side. Dwight Clark again lining up tight on the left side. Well, they send ring in motion over the right side. Montana will go back to throw. Rolls out to his right. Looks upfield. Throws, and the man is knocked out of bounds at about the... 16, 17 yard line. A gain of only short yardage. Bill Ring took the pass. Far short of what they needed for the first down. And again, the Bengal faithful are up on their feet as the Bengals have held one, two, three, and punt. And the line of scrimmage is the 16. So they made just three yards on that last play. Gets the punt away. It's a dandy. Mike Fuller backs all the way back to the 32. 
Comes up to the 35 to the 40, to the 45 to the 49-yard line, very close to midfield before he's knocked down by Keena Turner. Jim Miller just out under his coverage that time, and Footer had about 12 or 14 yards to run before any 49er got there, and they punted from very close to the same position. And the Bengals will start from very close to the same position right at midfield. Rookie John Simmons almost got to that punt. He was just uh, barely touched out of the play after he, he tried to get it and almost got the football coming off Miller's foot there. So the 49ers our negative yardage on two series here in the third quarter, and the Bengals go to work in midfield. Collinsworth to the left, Curtis to the right. Now Alexander will go wide outside of Collinsworth. That brings the safety up on Collinsworth, the corner on the outside. Anderson rolling out to his right, looks upfield. Now he's going to run. A flag is down right in front of where he was tackled at the 50-yard line by Willie Harper, and maybe the infraction was against Dan Ross, who was out there in front. Let's see. It is going to be... Against the Bengals, I think Dan Ross may have pushed or perhaps got the clip. Their left end, uh, Jim Stuckey, did not go for that fake bootleg that time at all. He just stayed right there, and Dan Ross from behind had to give a shove, and I believe that will cost the Bengals 10 yards. 49ers have defense that uh, rollout bootleg, whatever you want to call it, uh, effectively so far this afternoon. They've had a lot of film to look at in the last two weeks, and they've done a good job of cutting down Anderson's efficiency there. That's just the case. As Dan Ross for holding was the call. It's the case of the end just having to stay positioned, not cutting inside when he sees the flow go that way. And that time, uh, Stuckey stayed right there. Now they'll go to the four-man line. Dean checks in. And the Bengals have a first and 20, now back at their own 41. Steve Kreider is the third wide receiver. And again, he will go to the left and join the other two. Anderson back to throw. Looks, fires out a flat. Caught by Ross, the 45 to 50. Down to the 49ers, 45, 44 yard line before Eric Wright can wrap him up. And another flag thrown on the play downfield. And let's see what this one is going to be. The Bengals have the ball at the 49er 44. It would be second down and about three unless the penalty is against the Bengals. Bengals had five penalties in the first half but picked up one here in the third quarter. We're going to have a walk-off against the Bengals from the point that the pass was completed, which was the 49ers 45-yard line. Dan Ross motored out all by himself on that play. Matt Haggerty will walk off 15 yards, and that'll take it all the way back to the 40. There was a late hit on the part of one of the Bengals, and the Bengals are right back where the play started, and they will have a first and 20 back at their own 41. So a costly penalty wiping out that gain. Here's the call. Personal foul. Dead ball foul. Count, count, down count. So it is second down. Oh, it's a dead ball foul. So the down counts. It will be second down and 20, and the Bengals are back at their own 40. the number of the man who hit late on the play oh, was Steve Kreider. Now Kreider goes out as the third wide receiver out to the left. Second and 20. Bengals back at their own 40 again. Anderson back to throw. Look. Steps up. Now he's going to run and he's hit from behind and dropped back at the 36. Fred Dean coming around from the outside. Circles trailed Anderson up the middle and dropped him. So Kenny is back for the third time this afternoon. And that is a loss of about five more yards. And the 49er defense, after allowing that first touchdown drive, really has come back to assert itself. It is third down now and 25. Good effort by Fred Dean. Munoz had him down on the AstroTurf. He got up and got Anderson as Ken stepped up into the pocket. So Munoz did his job initially. But Fred Dean, with the extra effort, pursued, kept at it, and sacked the quarterback. I don't know what Steve Kreider was thinking of blocking Lott as late as he did. It really wiped out a big gain down to the 45. Now it's third and 25. Anderson back to throw. Goes long down the field and centered for Collinsworth. He has it all the way down at the 15-yard line. And a flag is out as he beat Eric Wright. 
That time they went Collinsworth one-on-one against Wright. Anderson laid the ball up in the air, and I think that Wright probably shoved him, but Collinsworth caught the ball down at the 17-yard line, went to the 14, and if he did interfere, the penalty will be tacked down from right there. That time, Collinsworth got him. Same pattern that misfired in the first quarter, Phil. Again, one-on-one -on -one coverage, and uh, Collinsworth beat him cleanly and caught the ball over the shoulder. So the ball is put at the 14-yard line. 49 yards. May have been just the indication of where the ball was caught because nothing has been walked off. It is a 50 yard pass play from Anderson to Collinsworth, and it'll be a first down at the 49er 14. Right, one of the three rookies in the backfield, along with Williamson and Ronnie Lott. Now, Curtis and Collinsworth come to the right. Chris gets a big, big catch. The backs are in an eye. It's a pitch back to Alexander, running left. Charlie cuts in, gets inside the 15 to maybe about the 13, a gain of only about a yard. Dwayne Board and Jack Reynolds were over there to hammer Alexander down as he tried to wide sweep to the left and then cutting back, and it gained only a yard. So now it becomes second down and nine. Anderson getting more time to throw the football here in the third quarter. That time, on the straight streak, he had a good four or five seconds to unleash that long pass to Collinsworth and Fritz. Just had super concentration in catching that ball over his shoulder. Well, they rushed with only three men, and that gave Anderson a long, long time to throw. So to second down and nine, it's a 49er 13. Collinsworth left, Curtis to the right, the backs with a big split passing formation. Anderson is back to throw. The blitz is on. Looks. Now he's going to be hit and will be dropped at the 15. Axel Reynolds on the blitz got him from behind, and he is going to lose two, and Anderson is sacked for the fourth time now. And now it becomes third down and nine at the 15. Bengals trailed in a football game 20 to seven, but they have come out and really have taken the play away from the 49ers here in this third quarter. Bengals have overcome some adversity in this drive, Phil. That holding penalty against Dan Ross and then the personal foul against Kreider. And Cincinnati shown some character in overcoming those problems. Well, it was third and 25 on the 50 yard touchdown pass, or rather 50 yard pass to Collinsworth. Five defensive backs in for San Francisco. Now Kreider comes in motion from left to right. He'll draw two men. Anderson back to throw. Looks, fires down. Dan Ross catches it at the five-yard line and is knocked down right there. And the Bengals, I believe, are going to have a first down at the five. Ross went down. Hook, girls, came back. And let's see where they're going to put the ball. They put it at the five-yard line, which means it is a matter of just about three or four inches short of a first down. It'll be fourth down and just those inches to go. Anderson really drilled the football. Dan Ross sent a quick turnaround at about the five, and Anderson, although he was pressured, just fired the ball as hard as I've ever seen him throw. The 49ers make a lot of defensive changes. The Bengals come up quickly to the line of scrimmage. The Bengals are going to go for it. They have two tight ends in there, Alexander and Johnson in the backfield. They send Burser in motion, a handoff. Pete has it as he rams inside the right side down to about the three. Pete Johnson running right behind big Mike Wilson on the right side. Picks up the first down at the three, and it will be first down and goal. A lot of 49ers down at the bottom of that stack, but Pete Johnson ripped to the three. It will be first and goal. A complete flip-flop here in the third quarter, Phil. The Bengals have controlled the football with the exception of uh, a minute and 34 seconds. The 49ers have had the ball for only six plays in this third quarter of the football game. Six plays and two punts. That's right. They've gone one, two, three, punt twice. First and goal at the three. A late substitution comes in for the 49ers. Tina Turner, first and goal at the three. Alexander and Johnson, the two running backs are in. Versa goes in motion to the far side. Hand off, Pete rams down to the one-yard line. Right in behind Dave Lapham at left guard that time. Hit by Dan Buns, the linebacker, who was in on the goal line defense. Pete Johnson takes it to the one. The Bengals will have a second and goal. and in back inside the one-yard line by about the length of the football. Bengals trailing 20 to 7. Really need a touchdown right here, and he'll be right back in this football game. Blair Bush did a great job of moving the nose tackle. Archie Reese right out of the area, and Johnson picks up two to the one. So the Bengals have scored once in the third quarter, bidding to score here again. The backs are offset to Anderson's left. Now he sends Verser in motion to the left side. Gives it to Pete. Hammers left side, and he has stopped cold. He may have lost a yard on that play. 
He was really nailed as he tried to go in over that left side. He was hammered down at the two-yard line. John Hardy, a rookie from Iowa, the last man to get up off the bottom of the stack. He lost about a half a yard. The ball is outside the one-yard line. It will be third down and goal. Boy, Hacksaw Reynolds came over and moving to his right and filled the hole and really put a shot into the lead blocker, Charlie Alexander, and knocked him right back into Pete Johnson. So it is third down, a big one right here. Let's see what the Bengals will try to pull out. Mercer is the wingman to the left. Now he comes in motion to the right side. Anderson with the ball, drops back to throw. Off in the flat, Alexander. He's going to be knocked down just short of the goal line. Getting over there was Dan Bunch. That ball is going to be about four inches away from the goal line. And I believe that the Bengals probably are going to go for it. Now the Bengals want to see what they're going to do. The ball is just inches away. As we check it, they're going to call a timeout to talk things over. The Bengals have about, perhaps, 12, 14 inches to go for the touchdown. Timeout on the field. With the score, the Bengal or the 49ers 20 and the Bengals 7. Celebrating 60 years of service and the home of the AFC champion Cincinnati Bengals, this is Cincinnati Radio, WLW. Bengals are going to go for it. Fourth down and about a foot away. Both lines jammed in tight. Hand off Pete Johnson. Rams the right side, and I don't believe he made it. The 49ers have held had a first down at the three-yard line and did not make it. And that should really inspire the San Francisco 49ers. Just a tremendous goal line stand. And the Bengals down there close could not get the ball in. They made nothing on that play on the right side. Well, they'll just have to hold the 49ers down here now and get the ball back and force them to punt from deep in their own territory. The 49ers really caved in on that right side. We were speculating here at the timeout I think maybe Anderson just ought to keep that ball on a keeper, but he gave it off to Pete Johnson, and Pete ran into a stone wall on the right side. The 49ers have held, and they will take over with a minute and 17 seconds left in this third quarter. We mentioned it earlier, the 49ers were tough against the rush in the regular season and in the first two playoff games, allowing only 10 rushing touchdowns, and they put on a super goal line stand there. That nose of the football is just about four or five inches away from the line. So the Bengals, for the third time here in the second half, will have to hold them down there, force a punt from deep in their own territory. There are only a minute and 17 seconds left to play in this third quarter. The Bengals took the second half kickoff and just proceeded to go 83 yards for a touchdown. They got down close again, but the 49ers have held. Dan Buns made the big play on that third down and that little pass out into the flat to Charlie Alexander. It looked like Charlie might uh, weasel his way into the end zone, but Buns made a short tackle and kept him out. And then the Bengals could not convert on that uh, fourth and less than a yard from inside the one. The third quarter has been all Bengals. They have scored seven points to trail 20-7. to seven. But the 49ers have had the ball for only eight plays. Two of them have been punts. Jim LeClaire checking with defensive coordinator Hank Bullo over at the sidelines. We've got the two tight ends, Charlie Young and Easton Ramson in the ball game. Joe Montana stands in the end zone as he comes up to his center, Fred Quillen. Hand off right side out to about the four-yard line comes Bill Ring. Got a little running room, made about four yards. Bobby Kemp over there to haul him down along with Bo Harris. Cameron, but he moved the ball out about four yards. Ring has been a valuable pickup man, a free agent out of Brigham Young. And uh, he, of course, had a touchdown and a little pass play in that first ball game in Cincinnati. This is the 49ers' third possession of the third quarter, and they have yet to score a first down. And they've had the ball for only nine plays. It'll be second down and seven at their four. They have Johnny Davis and Bill Ring in the backfield. Hand off right side, it's Ring. He breaks out to about the seven-yard line. Had a little more running room than that. And it was Bo Harris who knocked his legs out from under him. He fell forward in, and Bobby Kemp pinned him down. Jim LeClaire in a kneeling position on the field and uh, is injured. Jim LeClaire, who has played all year with a bum knee and a bum shoulder, now down on the ground at about the seven-yard line. They gain three more, and it will be third down and four. So Wally Temperament, along with Tom Gray, hustle out on the field to take a look at Jim LeClaire, who is holding on to his left knee. Both 
Tom Dinkle and uh, Rick Rosano are huddled around the uh, Bengal defensive coordinator Hank Fuller. I would guess if Dinkle is completely healthy, he'll be the man. He's played both inside and outside. Rosano filled in so well for Leclerc earlier in the season, though, especially in that Baltimore game. He played just superbly, so it may be Rosano who comes in to fill in for Jim Leclerc. Jim Leclerc is up, and he is being helped off the field very, very gingerly on that left knee. You know, Andy, the five Bengals who were in the Pro Bowl were scheduled to leave from here and go right to Hawaii, but they are not. They are coming home with the Bengals tomorrow, and uh, Mike Brown said if they're fine for not getting there and they're late, we'll pay the fine. We want them back home where they can get their proper greeting as far as the Cincinnati fans are concerned. Well, I'd have to agree with that decision wholeheartedly. I know the players would want to be a part of uh, that welcome that they're going to get in Cincinnati tomorrow. The ball is up at the eight-yard line, so actually it'll be third down and about three. It is Rick Rosano out of Virginia Tech who uh, fills in at the inside linebacker spot for the injured Jim LeClaire. You have to think that LeClaire probably is through for the day because of that twisted knee. The Bengals have to hold him right here and force another punt. There are 11 seconds left in this third quarter. San Francisco leads it 20-7. to seven. And they're letting time run out. They are not going to run off another play, and the two teams are heading down to change ends of the field. That is the end of the third quarter with the score, the 49ers 20 and the Bengals 7. The Bengals bounced back well in that third quarter, scoring their only touchdown and controlling the ball for about 12 minutes. San Francisco has had lousy field position, and the Bengals haven't let them off the hook. The 49ers have started their so-called drives at the 20, at the 15, and at the one-yard line, and now the Bengals are faced with another big third-down situation with the ball inside the uh, San Francisco 10. The Bengals have been down close three times. They have lost the ball twice, and on a fourth down play in this last series by Pete Johnson was stopped short of the goal line and the 49ers took over. Now the 49ers have a third and three at their own eight yard line as we go into this final 15 minutes of play. 20 to seven, the 49ers on top and the Bengals of course have to stop them right here. Bengals with the three man line. They have Browner, Whitley, Edwards. The regular linebackers, with the exception of Jim LeClaire, who was out with that twisted knee, Rick Rosano has replaced him. In the backfield are Earl Cooper and Ricky Patton for the 49ers. The wide split out to the left goes Patton. Montana hands off the ball, and Cooper is going to be nailed. Sacked right up at the eight-yard line. Montana faked the swing and then gave the ball to Cooper, and Cooper was wrapped up right at the eight-yard line, and the 49ers are going to have to punt. Ross Browner... Wilson Whitley, Cameron Rosano, all of them in there as they plugged up that middle along with Eddie Edwards, and the 49ers are going to have to punt for the third time, one, two, three, kick. The total offense figures for the third quarter are most revealing. The Bengals with 140 yards and the 49ers with only four. And after the first two series, they had minus yardage. They've gotten on the plus side by picking up seven yards on this one. So again, Miller will be putting back in his own end zone. He's standing about eight yards deep this time. Mike Fuller out of midfield. The barefooter from Mississippi has punted well. This one is a short punt that comes over toward the sideline. Fuller will take it on the bounce in Bengal territory. Now he's going to be knocked down at the 46-yard line. The 49ers downfield well to cover. And a punt that looked as though it may go out of bounds, but Fuller took it on the bounce. Randy Cross was down there to nail Fuller, and the Bengals will have the ball at their own 47-yard line. So Fuller gets nothing on that return, and the Bengals now go to work with 13 minutes and 58 seconds left in the touch or in the game, and the Bengals trail by 13 points. Curtis goes out to the right. Collinsworth there to the left. Right backs up. Lot comes right up to the line of scrimmage. Now he backs off. Anderson gives the ball to Pete. Pete ripped through. Up over midfield, down to the 49ers' 40-yard line. Keena Turner got him. Craig Pookie pinned him down. It is going to be a gain of maybe four yards. Well, make it three as they will put the ball right down at midfield. And it will become second down and seven. Pete Johnson now 14 carries, 36 yards. Bengals uh, have had big fourth quarters this year, both offensively and defensively. They've scored 136 points in the fourth quarter, more than any other team. 
but they have also given up 138. Second and seven at midfield. Back to throw goes Anderson. Look, fires downfield. It's caught by Collinsworth in the middle of the field at the 49 or 40, and he dives ahead to the 38 before Willie Harper could pin him down. And the Bengals convert a second and seven on the pass to Collinsworth right over the middle to the 49er 38-yard line, a 12-yard shot, and that is another first down. Bengals are having good luck over the middle. Completions to Ross and to Collinsworth and to Kreider right in the middle of that San Francisco defense. They haven't had that much luck with the exception of the long completion down the sidelines to Collinsworth attacking the flank of the San Francisco zone. Boy, Fred Dean just got a hand on Anderson that time as Munoz shoved him away. Anderson again back to throw. Looking again down the middle. Ross at the 30. Has it and is down at the 28. There we go. Right over the middle again. Dan Ross caught that one. And he was pulled down by Bobby Leopold, who was in as one of the extra linebackers here in this situation. That is a gain of about 10 yards. And it may be close enough that they will bring in the chains from the far side of the field to measure. Let's see. And again, Ross showed his talent at catching the ball that was thrown a little bit behind him. He had just so well to the football, and he's such a sure receiver. And that uh, football is marked extremely close to the first down, but they're not going to measure. It's about a half yard short. Yeah, he spotted it down at the 28 and a half, so it'll be second down and less than a yard to go for the first down. Two men out to the right, one to the left. Anderson is back to throw. Looks, fires down the middle. It's incomplete, almost intercepted by Ronnie Lott. Flag thrown on the play, and let's see what we have. Right down the middle, Curtis and Collinsworth. Collinsworth is clapping his hands, and the 49ers are unhappy. Carlton Williamson, I believe, it may be called for something down there. Let's get Pat Haggerty's call. It's pass interference, number 42. It's it's pass first. interference against Ronnie Lott, who wiggled past the receiver, and the Bengals will have a first down down at the 15-yard line. Anderson threw that ball into plenty of traffic. Williamson moved up in front of Isaac Curtis and brushed him as he tipped the ball, and they've called the interference. Isaac Curtis, the intended receiver, and Ronnie Lott shoved him. Now Alexander goes out wide to the right, outside of Curtis. Anderson back to throw. The blitz is down. Now he's going to have to run. Throws it upfield, incomplete. He threw in the grasp of a couple of tacklers. There was no Bengal receiver really close to the ball. Max Montoya was the closest man, and the 49er coaches are really unhappy. The blitz was on. One man had hold of Anderson's jersey, but he threw the ball, and the closest man to it was Montoya, who, of course, is an ineligible receiver. So it'll be second down and 10. 49ers definitely wanted intentional grounding. Max Montoya was very slow in getting up there, but he stays on the field. He's back in the huddle. Now Charlie Alexander comes out of the Bengal lineup. Well, Max Montoya was slow getting up because he wanted to remain as inconspicuous <laughs> as possible as a possible <laughs> pass receiver. I like that theory. Now three wide receivers to the left as Kreider goes over there. Now he sends Kreider in motion to the right side. And Anderson again goes back to throw. It's a four-man rush. Fires it down. Ross at the five-yard line. Pulls it in. Carlton Williamson down there with Dan Ross, who curled back and grabbed the ball at the five, and it's just about the 10 yards that they needed for the first down, depending on where they spot the ball. And again, it is going to be a matter of just inches short. Just outside the five-yard line, it will be second down and one. A fine move by Ross, curling away from Williamson, and now the 49ers send in a flock of new people on defense. That's seven catches for the Bengal tight end, Dan Ross, 74 yards. The Bengals were down, knocking at the goal on the last series, only to be stopped. Third down and a yard to go. A handoff. Alexander dives into the right side. Gets maybe a yard, but it should be enough for the first down. Dwight Hicks really messed up the interference on that side, but I think that Alexander got the first down inside the five. We'll have to wait and see, and they all unstack. Ken Anderson, 10 out of 12 in the second half for 141 yards. The ball is just inside the five-yard line, close enough that they're going to bring in the chains to measure. 10.35 is the time remaining in the football game. If the Bengals don't make it, it will be fourth down. It is the first down. Just inside the five, it'll be first and goal. 
And you don't have to be any student of the game of football to know that the Bengals have to score right here. They trail 20 to 7 with only 10 and a half minutes left to play. We've been in this position before, and the 49ers put up a tremendous goal line stand the last time. The Bengals went with their trump card in Pete Johnson in close, and he didn't have too much luck. Let's see if they change up now offensively. They'll only go with one back this time, and the three wide receivers. Kreider goes to the left with Curtis and Collinsworth. Now Kreider will go in motion to the right side of the field. Anderson will go back to throw. Looks, fires into the end zone. Touchdown to Dan Ross. Dan Ross right down the middle again. Maneuvered away from Williamson. And the teammates of his mob in down in the end zone. And now the Bengals are right back in his football game. And an extra point here, of course, would put the Bengals within six. That is eight catches for Dan Ross in this football game. Five of them have come here in the second half. And time and time again, Anderson has attacked Carlton Williamson, the rookie out of Pitt, and he does it again here for the touchdown. So Danny Ross gets the touchdown, and the Bengals tap that end zone once again. It is now a 20-13 ball game. The 49ers have been held completely at bay. A big extra point attempt right now by Jim Breach. Ryder will put it down. Breach will attempt it. The lines are down. We're waiting for the snap. It's high, but Breach's kick is through. So there's time out on the field with a score now. The 49ers, 20, and the Bengals, 14. They score their second straight touchdown, and Cincinnati trails by six at 20 to 14. So Jim Brees will kick off. Again, Bill Ring and Dwight Hicks are the deep men for the 49ers. 10.06 is the time remaining. A lot of time. The 49ers do not have a first down. They have a grand total of only about four yards of offense here in this second half. They've run off only 12 plays, and three of those have been punched by Jim Miller. We're having a little delay right here. The Bengals' Andy did not score down there when Pete Johnson was stopped, but the ensuing field position after the punt down there set things up, so finally persisting, keeping the 49ers in bad field position, and they finally get it in on a five-yard touchdown pass from Anderson to Ross. So Breach will hammer it. He kicks it down, a good high boot that'll be taken by Hicks at the four. Comes up to the five, to the 10, to the 15, spins away at the 20, and is going to be knocked down at the 26-yard line. Went down to the grass for Rick Rosano, and a pretty good hit by Ray Griffin in there, also to help bring him down. So the 49ers will take over at their own 27-yard line. San Francisco getting a bit conservative. They went with Dwight Hicks as a deep back along with Ring and did not use famous Amos Lawrence. Uh, he was back there, they used three deep. He fumbled that opening kickoff for sure, and Dwight Hicks, who is much more sure-handed, took that one out across the 25. Well, the 49ers start at their own 27. They have Solomon and Mark as the wide receivers. They send Patton in motion, Montana back to throw. Out in the flat, it's incomplete. It's intended out there for Ricky Patton taking a shallow drift, and Reggie Williams grabbed his old former high school teammate and threw him down, but the pass had whistled by his ear by that time. So now at the 49ers, 27, it becomes second and 10. This is San Francisco's best field position of the second half. They've started drives on the 20, 15, and one-yard line, and this one begins on the 27. The Bengals down 20 to nothing at the half. They've come back for two touchdowns and trailed 20 to 14. They get a passing formation with a wide split, and a whistle, the Bengals charge across, and they want a illegal procedure call against somebody on the left side of that line. Dan Audick, the left tackle, who moved, and that will cost them five yards. And you have to wonder if the 49ers aren't beginning to come apart a little bit here, Andy. It'll be second down now and 15 with a five-yard walk-off. It's been a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde routine. 49ers have made the mistake, taken the dumb penalties, and not been able to con convert on third downs here in the second half. And that's something they did not do in the first half. No penalties, and they were almost perfect in third down conversions. Solomon goes out, Mike Wilson comes in. He comes out to the right, back for that wide split behind Montana, second and 15 at the 22. Patton comes in motion to the near side, Montana goes back to throw. Rolls out to the right, looks upfield, throws, and is caught and out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Caught by Mike Wilson up at the 44, and a couple of the Bengals really hot along the sideline. He caught the ball right in front of the Bengals' bench. There's that Montana rollout. 
And the play is good for about 22 yards, and that will be a 49er first down. Their only gainer of any consequence thus far in that second half, and Montana got it with a rollout play to the right. Freddie Solomon checks back into the lineup. Mike Wilson was in for him on that series and caught the big gainer on the second and long. Montana rolling out to give himself a little more time to throw. Well, Solomon is at the right. Clark is lined up tight at the left. Montana again is back to throw. Look, fires it upfield. It's incomplete at the 48-yard line. A flag is thrown from behind, and we may get interference against Rosano on Clark. Bengals had the safety blitz. Bobby Kemp came from the left side and got to the quarterback, Montana, just as he let the ball go. Rosano playing in place of the injured Jim LeClaire, and he climbed up the he back that pass time. Interference number 13. Well, the pass interference was called on Riley, not Rosano. And it will be enough to give them an automatic first down on the five-yard penalty out to the 49-yard line. So Kenny Riley is the man who was called for the pass interference, not Rosano. We have nine minutes and 40 seconds to play in regulation. The Bengals trail the 49ers by a 20 to 14 score. Eddie Edwards was right in on top of Montana that time. But it's first and 10 now. The 49ers at their own 49. Clark Wright. Solomon comes in motion over to that side. Montana hands the ball up. Up the middle. A big run by Ricky Patton down to the 41-yard line. And the last guy, Brian Hicks, got him. Big blocking in the middle by Quillen, Randy Cross, and John Ayers. And had not Hicks made that tackle around the ankles of Patton, he might have been off to the races. Brian Hicks had Patton one-on-one, -on -one, held his ground, and then dove for the feet to bring him down. The 10-yard pickup, and it may be enough for a first down. The chains are coming in. So the 49ers moving the ball now for the first time in this second half. And the Bengals trailing by six. Don't want them to get a field goal. It is enough for a first down at the Bengals' 41-yard line. Bengals middle linebackers have been moved around pretty well this entire ball game as the 49ers have had some good gains up the middle. So the 49ers will send Solomon and Clark to the left. Patton and Cooper are the running backs. They're at the Bengals 41. A handoff is Patton this time and he is hit at the 39 yard line. Really hit solidly and wrapped up and the guy who nailed him was Ross Browner. Browner came shot across from the right end spot. It's amazing how many times Browner can come from the right side to make a tackle right at the line of scrimmage on the left side. But Patton's momentum on the angle carried him forward for a couple of yards. And at the 39, it is second and eight. Browner's had a big game against the run. He's also turned in a quarterback sack. So Ross Browner has enjoyed himself an excellent Super Bowl so far. They line Clark tight left, Solomon tight right. Montana hands the ball off. It's Pat running to the left. He's going to get all the way down to the 33-yard line. And to his right, the Bengals left. And finally, it was Browner from the other side of the field, along with Hicks and Cameron, who got over there to make the tackle. And he picked up just about the eight yards that he needed for the first down. So Ricky Patton running well. And again, we may have to bring in the chains to measure. 20 to 14, the 49ers lead it after they had a 20 to nothing halftime lead. And that one is going to be less than an inch short at the Bengals' 31-yard line. It will be third down and just an inch, maybe two inches to go. Again, San Francisco reestablishing their running game. Their running game had uh, taken a vacation in the third quarter. The 49ers couldn't get themselves in decent field position, and the Bengals held them without a first down, but San Francisco has moved the ball from their own 27 down to the Bengals' 31. So it is third down and just inches to go. Wouldn't be at all surprised to see Montana keep the ball. That is Montana, and he dives with it in over the right guard inside the 30 to maybe the 29 and has the first down. Follow the blocks of Fred Quillen, the center. Randy Cross, the white guard. And at the 29-yard line, the 49ers have a first down. In fact, where they put the ball down, it is actually the 28-yard line. So it'll be first and 10 right there. The Bengals trailing by six just cannot afford to give up a field goal even with seven minutes and 45 seconds left in the game. 49ers are keeping the clock running, keeping the ball inbounds and on the ground. 49ers ready to go at the Bengals 28. Solomon will go in motion over to the left side. 
Montana will hand the ball off. Cooper running to the left. Riley knocks him down with a good tackle at about the 26. They sent the flow to the right. Cooper cut back and took the handoff to the left. Burst through it. Hole on the left side, and Kenny Riley hit him around the ankles and dropped him after a gain of a yard when it appeared that he might have some pretty good area to run in. Good open field tackle by Riley. It will be second down and nine. Down to seven minutes to play in the fourth quarter. Not only a touchdown, the Bengals have to keep him out of field goal range. Nine points would be probably too much. Hand off into the line, Patton. And he's pulled down by Reggie Williams as he crosses the 25 and gets maybe to the 24-yard line. Wilson Whitley on the nose, in on the stop also. And now it will bring up a third down and six. And it has been on these type of situations that Montana has really gone to the rollout. Montana, of course, was the NFC passing champion. Kenny Anderson topped the AFC and the entire NFL. So we have the two top quarterbacks in football matched up against each other in this game today, and both have had good days. Ethan Ratson comes out of the ball game. Dwight Clark is in, and he's the man that Montana likes to go to in these situations. 24-yard line of the Bengals, third and six. Montana hands off into the line. Patton gets nothing. Ross Browner and about three or four others in the middle wrap him up, and that should bring in Wershing for a field goal attempt. The line of scrimmage will be about the 23. It will be a 40-yard attempt by Wershing, and he was kicking them as far as 55 and 56 yards before this ball game started. Wershing coming into the game, as I mentioned, did not miss inside the 30. At this range, between 40 and 49, he is four out of seven. And with only five minutes and 35 seconds left, this 40-yard field goal attempt is really a big one, if it is to be an attempt. Snap back, Wershing's kick is lined up, and it is good. There's time out on the field with the score of the 49ers, 23, and the Bengals, 14. Well, the 49ers now have a nine-point lead at 23 to 14 with five minutes and 25 seconds to go. Boy, does that field goal they got right at the end of the half after Archie Griffin fumbled a kickoff really look big. Here's Wershing again. He kicks the number, bounces at the 30, at the 15, goes over versus head. He finally gets it at the 15. Running laterally at the 20, gets to the 21-yard line, it goes down. And it's a little difficult to see why some of those Bengals men in the wedge who have an opportunity to pick up the ball do not. Amos Lawrence got down there, and uh, Bursar got a lucky bounce after the ball bounced over his head. And he got it back to the 22-yard line, and Wersing has just kicked those numbers all afternoon long. He's only put one kick off into the air. Bengals get the ball back with five minutes and 14 seconds left in the game. They trail by nine at 23-14. Bengals will go the three wide receivers. Curtis and Kreider go to the right, Collinsworth to the left. They have Tina Turner with a backup on Collinsworth. Anderson goes back to throw. It's a three-man rush. He looks, fires downfield. It's intercepted at the 50, down to the 40. The 30, down to the 25, and the 21-yard line still on his feet. Laterals it off. The ball is lost in a big scramble up the 21-yard line. It was Eric Wright who picked off that pass intended for Collinsworth, and the 49ers have recovered a ball just short of the Bengals' 21-yard line. That might be it right there. I think it was Willie Harper was the guy who got on the ball. Eric Wright intercepted that pass out near the 45-yard line. The pass was intended for Collinsworth. It came up short. And Wright stepped in front and came up with the football. So the 49ers will have the ball at the Bengals' 22-yard line. It will be first and 10. Wright ran it down the sidelines, fumbled the ball, and Willie Harper recovered. They have it at the 22. So that is four turnovers now for the Bengals. There's time out on the field. 1,270, the official attendance here at the Silverdome, and a big, big play by Eric Wright. That ball kind of sailed on Anderson. He intercepted it, and unfortunately, from San Francisco standpoint, unfortunately, from the Bengals standpoint, they got the football. Now they can run down the clock, and with a nine-point lead, that may have been it right there. Solomon will go in motion to the left side. Hand off, Ricky Patton tries the right side, bursts inside the 20, gets to about the 17 before Rosano and Bobby Kemp, along with Cameron, can bang him down. But he gained about four on the play on that shot 
into the right side, and it will be second down and six. The ball right at the Bengals' 18-yard line. Wright ran that ball back from the 45 down to about the 22. The fumble ensued when he tried to lateral the ball, but the 49ers got it back. Now it becomes second down and six at the Bengals' 18. The clock is running in four minutes. 22 seconds is all that remains. 49ers with a seemingly safe nine-point lead. Big pitch into the line, bursting down to the 15-yard line goes Earl Cooper, diving in over the right side. Cameron and a couple of others pinned him down right there. Ross Browner also went in the stop. He got as far as the 15, a gain of three, and now it'll become third down and three. And the 49ers seemingly are content to run the ball, just keep it in field goal position for Wershing. Bengals right now, of course, need a touchdown and a field goal. If they get another field goal, it means that the Bengals would need two touchdowns with only 3.40 left to go. That is not very likely. The nose of the ball right at the 15. It is third and three. Johnny Davis and Patton are the running backs. Hand off into the line, plunging all the way down to the 10-yard line before being shoved back was Davis, the big 235-pounder from Alabama, and he may have the first down. I believe he does. Yes, he does. Ryan Hicks up to the safety spot. He just slammed his way right up the middle that time. And he got the ball all the way down to the 10-yard line. Just five yards on that power play. And it is a first down for the 49ers just outside their 10-yard line. Now Mike Wilson checks in for Fred Solomon. The 49ers taking a lot of time. The clock running is down to 2.52. They have 10 seconds to get off the play as they break the huddle. And, and at 2.31, I believe the Bengals called a timeout here to stop the clock. And if they did, the Bengals will have just one timeout left. Yes, they have stopped it. There's timeout on the field. The 49ers, by virtue of Eric Wright's interception, have the ball right back deep in Bengal territory. And after the two-yard game, have a second down in about seven and a half just inside the eight-yard line. Patton and Cooper in the backfield. Now handoff is Ricky Patton running wide to the right. Rosano pens him in and he falls down at the 13-yard line. Loses about five on that sweep to the right. Whitley and Hicks got right over there to cover. And now the Bengals call their last timeout. They will not have any left. Two minutes and 20 seconds is all the time that is left in this football game. And the 49ers will have a third down now and about 13 yards to go back at their own 13-yard line. I remember the reception uh, down at Fountain Square in downtown Cincinnati tomorrow afternoon. It'll be at approximately 1 o'clock. The Bengals plane is scheduled to leave Metro Airport in Detroit at 11. It means he should get back at about 10 to 12. It'll take a while to unload all the bags, get everybody assembled, and get down to Fountain Square. The rain trust of the 49ers, led by Bill Walsh on the far sideline, talking with Joe Montana. The Bengals defensive man, Rick Rosano, Tom Dink talking with Hank Buller down at the sidelines. The Bengals now no longer can stop the clock. They have used their last time out. Well, the Bengals came roaring back from a 20 to nothing halftime deficit. Scored after taking the opening kickoff in the third quarter. Got down close once again when Pete Johnson was stopped fourth and inches. But then came back to score on the Anderson five-yard pass to Dan Ross. But then the 49ers moved the ball for the first time in the second half. Wershing kicked a 40-yard field goal. And that gave them a seemingly impossible deficit for the Bengals to make up at 23 to 14. The 49ers came into this game as a one-point favorite. I think I mentioned 81,270, the official attendance here at the Silverdome, the first Super Bowl ever played in the North. That is third down at about 13 for the 49ers, back at their own 13-yard line. Montana on play action, back to throw. Riley chases him, can't get him. Montana running at the 15, at the 10, spins away and gets to about the six-yard line. Reggie Williams overran him, and then Ryan Hicks came over to make the tackle at the six. So it is far short of what they need for a first down. They have to get it down to the one-yard line, and let's see if they're going to go or what they're going to do as we hit the two-minute warning. There's a timeout on the field. With a score, the 49ers 23 and the Bengals 14. 
Lost in the shuffle of this ball game will be the fact that Kenny Anderson has completed 19 passes, which is a new Super Bowl record for completion. It's hard to believe that nobody has ever completed as many as 20 passes in 15 Super Bowl games. Worsing with a 23-yard field goal attempt. Joe Montana will hold. The ball is snapped back. Wershing's kick is up and is through the upright. And now the 49ers have a 12-point lead at 26 to 14. Let's pause 15 seconds for station identification. Wershing has been squib kicking those kickoffs all day long, and the Bengals have really had difficulty finding a handle on the ball. the farthest they have returned to kick off all afternoon is the 17 yard line and Archie Griffin fumbled that one reaching around vainly for it near the end of the first half after they had scored a field goal and they quickly got another field goal with just five seconds left in the half so the Bengals have Obravic and Blake Moore at the 20 Archie Griffin looking things over backing up now to the 10 and Verser is standing back at about the three so here is Wershing's kick again. He will nub it along. It bounces at the 20, a big bounce, and Verser takes it at the 10. Up to the 20, will get to about the 25, 26-yard line and goes down on the far side of the field. Three or four 49ers led by Dwight Hicks were over there to haul him down. The Bengals do not have any timeouts remaining. They trail by 12 points with a minute and 51 seconds left. They will have the ball at their own 26. Anderson, 19 out of 28 for 229 yards, 14 out of 22 for Montana, and 157. Two wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Four-man defensive line, Fred Dean on the outside. Anderson back to throw, has a lot of time looking. Now he's going to run over the far side, throws downfield, is caught by Curtis, and he's dropped at the Bengals' 47-yard line by Williamson. The Bengals will go without virtue of a huddle. 21-yard pass reception by Isaac Curtis. It's first and 10. The Bengals at their own 47. No timeouts left. Again, that four-man rush. Anderson back to throw. Downfield is caught by Ross at the 40. He'll get down to the 38-yard line in Frisco territory. San Francisco knows that time is all in their favor. A minute and 14 seconds left. The Bengals line up again without a huddle. They have three plays in this sequence. Anderson may have to throw this one away. Fires it down, is caught by Ross at the 30. Spins and is dropped at the 29-yard line. One minute left to play. Dan Ross has caught nine passes, I believe, now. No, that is 10. The new Super Bowl record. Anderson back to throw. Looking, fires it upfield at the 20-yard line. Kreider knocked down immediately after catching the ball by Bobby Leopold. That was Collinsworth. And now the officials have called the timeout. It'll stop the clock with 40 seconds left. Collinsworth on that reception. Knocked down by Leopold. Encroachment. Defense. It is a penalty against the 49ers encroachment. Somebody lined up offside in that neutral zone. That is the reason that the clock is stopped. The gain on the pass play to Collinsworth carried down to the 20-yard line, and the Bengals will take it right there. It's declined, and the Bengals are ready to go. First and 10 at the 20. 40 seconds is all that remains. Anderson is back to throw, looking, fires down to the three-yard line, is caught down at the three-yard line by Kreider. With 30 seconds left, the Bengals will hustle on down. Bobby Leopold is there to cover him. It is first and goal at the 49er three. Clock running, 22 seconds left. Anderson again, back to throw, looks. Fires into the end zone, touchdown to Dan Ross. With just 16 seconds left to go, Ross again on that same play, perhaps, curled away from Carlton Williamson in the middle. And with 16 seconds left, Ross gets his second touchdown pass of the game, his 11th pass reception, a new Super Bowl record. It is now a 26-20 ball game, and the Bengals just went 74 yards in a big hurry. Anderson to Ross for the final three. They did it with no timeouts left. Kreider will hold. Breach will attempt the extra point. Lines are down, waiting for the snap. It's high. Breach kick is up, and it is good. So it is a 26-21 football game. 
And the Bengals' only chance, of course, is to recover an onside kick. And they might have about three plays left, but they could not throw the ball down the middle of the field unless they threw it all the way into the end zone because they cannot stop the clock. They went 74 yards that time in very, very short order. Anderson to Ross, and what an afternoon Danny Ross has had. 11 receptions, two touchdowns, but the 49ers have a five-point lead, and the Bengals, of course, will have to try an onside kick. The 49ers know it, and they'll have their hands team out in the field. Lot is out there. Hicks. Probably Eric Wright. And Super Bowl 16 is just 16 seconds away from being complete. If the 49ers recover this kick, it is all over. It's just a matter then of these final seconds ticking away. The Bengals with a valiant second-half comeback, but they could not overcome that 20 to nothing halftime lead. The guys with the good hands, Clark, Lott, Wright, Hicks, Leopold, Mike Wilson, are all up at the 45 to 50 yard line of Bengal territory as Jim Breach gets set to kick it off. The Bengals need a touchdown, a field goal would not do it. Of course, they trail by five. Now they'll kick it over to the left as the Bengals shift that way. There's the bouncing kick, and the 49ers have it at the Bengals' 48 yard line. And that will take care of it right there. The 49ers got the ball. Dwight Clark. That was Mike Wilson. One of those two. The man recovered the ball. I believe it was Dwight Clark. Who was being assisted to his feet by his teammates. Clark was the guy who recovered the ball. And that will give the 49ers Super Bowl number 16. Photographers already out along the sidelines crowded out in front of Coach Bill Walsh on the far sideline. The 49ers can flop the ball just one time, and this football game will be over. So near and yet so far. Well, it's been a disappointing afternoon, but it was the first half that really did the Bengals in. The Bengals have turned the ball over four times. The 49ers will flop it once, and that will be the end of the game. Montana takes it, goes down onto the field, and the final 10 seconds will tick off. And the 49ers have won the Super Bowl by a score of 26 to 21. The photographer's out on the field, and there it is. And the 49ers are Super Bowl champions, 26 to 21 over the Cincinnati Bengals.